This is Beyond the Showroom, where you'll learn tips and techniques on the car buying process, how to get the best deal, what scams to watch out for, and much more. Here's your host and one of the foremost automotive business experts in the country, the Chevy dude, Mike Davenport. And hello, everyone. I hope you are having a fantastic Friday night. Mrs. Chevy Dude is here. Oh, I am. Yeah. I mean, that it's, says your host, the Chevy Dude. It does so say the host. I guess I'm You're the hostess. Chop liver. The hostess. Chop liver hostess. <laughs> Got a little visitor over there on your left side. Yep. Corey <laughs> had to come say hi. She was on our uh, uh, Zoom meeting on Wednesday. Every Wednesday we have Zoom meetings. And um, I would say we're on there from like noon until four o'clock in the afternoon. And she came up in one of our Zoom meetings. We actually have cameras on. And uh, the dog came up and uh, was, was having some fun. And everybody was like, oh, it's so cute. And I was like, yeah, you know, she's cute. She's annoying. What? Saw a bunch of people on here I know. Steven Rapp, how's it going? Buyer of a new 2021 Suburban, the Masked Chicken, Derek, or Dark Mannix, Chase, Arham, Jeter Collector 2. How's everyone going? How many cars you at for the month? I never talk about my car sales. I'm superstitious about it. I can't stand it. Every single time I talk about I did this or this is my goal, boom, flat on my face every single time. What do you think? Yeah. Every single I mean, time. Oh, ouch. Is that too loud? That was way too loud. All right, there you go. Thanks for the uh I'm Trying to blow your hearing, ears up. Yeah, <laughs> hearing check. <laughs> the dog's over there on the screen. Love it. I know. I love she, it. She wants. William, how's it going? So, oh, there she is. Put her back on. <laughs> Glad you got pants on. You know, some of the news anchors, they don't wear pants. They just, they just, they just look good from waist up. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I have pants on. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Corey? Silly dogs. Silly dogs. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about beginning of the uh, stream. We're going to talk about the car market right now. The car market is crazy. It's absolutely insane. Um, I see every single day more and more buyers um, coming in uneducated, completely confused, and then they leave They leave frustrated. And that's when they leave frustrated, who do they blame? Well, they blame the salesperson right. or the dealership. But at the same time, it's hard to keep up with, say, like the used market. And unless you are searching daily and paying attention to car gurus, auto trader, all those websites. It's hard to know exactly what a used car should be priced at. It is. You're, you're absolutely right. And it's very, very tough, which is, which is uh, why I want to do these quarterly, at least quarterly updates on stuff, because I think it's uh, um, important to educate and we like entertaining as well. That's why I call myself an edutainer. So, oh my goodness, made up word. I don't know if that's made up word. It is Louisville made up zombie word. truck unit thirteen. I have seen that before. Yes, we saw him at um, was it Shepherdsville or yes, it yes. was that. Oh no, Mount Washington. Mount Washington. Mount Washington. It was yes. that. Uh, How's it going, buddy? Um, yeah, that 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 car show. That drive. <laughs> yeah. That drive. That cruise. The cruise in. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. That so, you made me drive to, and then my C7 just sat way in, way the, in the back, back. while the C8 got the prominent spot. That was the day after I got it wrapped. The day, or no, yeah. the day of, the day of. Yeah. No, it was the day after, but it was the day I kind of revealed it, because I went to that Cars and Coffee at the beginning, and then we went to that at night, which we've never been back. I like to go back. I, I had a lot of fun meeting well, a lot of people there. I mean, 2020 happened. Yeah, COVID, right? So. All right, so let's talk about uh, production, right? So this time of year is um, when production uh, kind of like the last of the stuff happens. This is this right here. Check this out. This is like tells me everything that's going on with production schedules for 21 and 22. And um, so like the biggest, the biggest ones are going to be Silverado trucks, right? So Silverado, Silverado light duties, which is your 1500 um, like the crew cabs, the build out date, I will say double cab too. Bu double cab and crew cab. The last day, 
that the plant is going to be making those trucks is 924. I should say that week. That's probably a Monday. I didn't look at the dates on this, but uh, that's a Monday most likely. So 924, 21, that's the last time that they're going to make 21 light duty trucks. Um, on regular cab, which are basically your work trucks, you know, um, 918, so a week prior. So, and that doesn't mean that that you can be like, well, I'm going to come in in August and buy myself a truck and order one. doesn't happen that way. It doesn't work that way. So the final consensus month is July. So that means like the last time that we can order trucks is July 15th. So, so July, August, September, September's nine, right? So for 90 days, we're going to have all of our stuff done and we're going to be actually ordering 22s um, between the last time that we ordered 21s to the 22s. So the HD trucks, and, and, I, and I mentioned these trucks first because um, they're, they're highly sought after and that's the ones that most people want. So, and regardless of where you live in the country, I, I mean, I would be not doing myself justice by saying you can order for me and we can get it done. Uh, and I can drop ship it anywhere in the country. But uh, it's also reason I bring up trucks is because the, um, uh, trucks are crazy. They're absolutely insane. You can't get them. We have, we typically have like 300 half ton silver autos in stock. We might have 10, 12, 15, something like that. In other words, don't wait till the end of the model year to, uh, get a new truck. Oh, there's <laughs> definitely going to be no end of the model year this year. Absolutely not. End of the model year was, and I saw somebody asking earlier about, um, uh, rebates currently and whether or not waiting for truck month is a good option. Basically, it sounds like you better, if you want a truck, get on it now. Yeah. Truck month is every month, right? So it's, it's always truck month. And I saw, I think Steven asked me and I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to answer him. But he asked, when's the best time to buy a vehicle? Um, so Silverado HD truck. We have one in stock, by the way. HD truck would be your 2500s, your 3500s, your 3500 dualies, your 3500 cha cabin chassis. Um, uh, so outside of the con other consumer, not work trucks, but like LTZ, High Country, LT. Yeah, we have one in stock. We usually have 30, 40, 50 in stock. So uh, regular cabs, uh, oh, they're all the same date. So regular cab, double cab, crew cab, the build out is going to be July 10th. So a couple months prior to the half tons. So that's always confusing. Um, and then April 2nd, the week of April 2nd. So we only have two more weeks to order uh, HD trucks. That's then we're done. And then on those two trucks, um, the production starts 22, um, nine started production is 927, 924 half tons cruise. And then initial consensus is August one. So we will, we will go from July. Yeah. So we go a month without able to order a vehicle. So that's not too bad. Um, the next one, what's the next one I was going to say, Oh, suburbans and Tahoe's. So, uh, build out dates on those is 10, one 21 and July 2nd is our last, uh, consensus month. So, uh, July is the end of those. We have, how many do you, how many Tahoe's and Suburbans do you think we have on the ground right now? We're a top 200 Chevy dealership. Put it in the chat. How many Tahoe's and Suburbans do you think we have as a top 200 Chevy dealership right now? $85,000, $90,000 Tahoe's. What do you think? Well, I thought you were asking me, and then you're like, no, put it in oh, the chat. We, we want to involve, <laughs> we want to involve them. Um, I would say probably less than five. You're close. You're close. What's chat say? Um, so the answer is going to be zero. We have zero Tahoe's and Suburban stock. Uh, Ryan Bachman, uh, owner of our dealership, son of the owner. He might as well be the owner. He's an awesome dude. Um, he is currently driving a Jeep Renegade. <laughs> or no, not a Jeep Renegade. A Jeep. Uh, what's the stupid Jeep truck? Um, Gladiator. Gladiator. He is driving a Gladiator. I was like, a Renegade? Yeah, uh, no. That was a little old. So, so I uh, I asked him today. I said, how do you like that uh, Gladiator? <laughs> he just shook his head. He's, he's used to driving a Tahoe, right? I've been at this company for 11 years. And um, for 11 years, he's always driven a Tahoe. His wife drives a Suburban and um, he's like, oh man, this is nothing. This is nothing like a Tahoe or Suburban. Um, they don't have keyless access on the key fob. You have to actually get your key out and hit the unlock button. First world problems, right? Um, 
but you know, it is what it is. Um, so, so Tahoe's and Suburbans 10 one is the last build out week. And then July is when we can start ordering those. And, uh, I guess, I guess what's, what, is there another vehicle I should talk about? What do you think? Well, of course, what every what dominates almost every <laughs> single live stream Do we want because to of up? who you are. <laughs> it's a C eight. The C eight. So um this sheet for Corvette and Convertible says build out T B D to be determined. Doesn't tell us what it is. But I have a theory on that. I have a theory. What What's do you think your my theory, theory is? compared to what I've been reading? Oh, I, I okay. Well, <laughs> okay, perfect. Because I, I don't read Corvette Blogger. I don't on the forums. I'm not in Facebook groups. I don't read any of that. What I like to call BS, right? So, so here's here's my theory, and you can tell me what what the forums are saying. So, uh, TBD for build out date. Uh, final consensus month is June one. Uh, final consensus cycle is June seventeenth. So that means the week of June 17th, that Thursday, we'll get our allocations, which we should know prior to, but that's when we can put the orders in on June 17th. And everything else is TBD. So here's what I know. I'm trying to think, make sure I don't get anyone in trouble. We don't want to get anybody in trouble. Well, would you like so, to know what they're... No, 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 hold on. Uh. So, so um, <laughs> right now, I know of orders that went in last month that production is in May. Okay. So we're talking of about February, March, April, May, 90 days passed, 90 days passed. So with that being said, if the final consensus is June, that's July, August, September, that means the end of September is when 2021 production will stop TBD, which means we just went five. We just went out of the six weeks we went four weeks without production. So if that happens again, that goes longer. So we could perceive that what we did last year, we go all the way through December if there's problems. But what I think is going to be the end of September, um, early October, as far as last of production. So what do you think? Well, the speculation that I've seen is more along the lines of finishing production around the end of July, August, normal Corvette yes. finish of production good, and going back to a normal production year. So, um, you know, they're saying start of new production being September. So it'll just depend on whether or not they even continue, you know, taking orders or allowing things to get to 3000 status. Okay, so I'm I'm glad to hear that. So um, we can we can say here at 15 minutes and 40 seconds on this live stream that they're wrong. I'm I'm just gonna say it. They're wrong. So that way in September October that I can come out and say these morons who are on the internet talking about this 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 and this and I do call them morons because they're just trying to be internet famous and I'm not trying to be internet famous. I'm just trying to give good information because people like me are hated in the automotive industry and I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to give good information without. Um, giving some bad stuff. So the, um, with that being said, the, um, with, we already know, we already know what March and April allocations are going to be. So that means that if they're going to be doing June, to, uh, excuse me, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Yes. June, June one, June one, uh, is final consensus. June 17th is when we're going to be making those orders. So we know April, that means we're going to get May and June allocations. So we're going to have two more, cycles of allocations, which means that stuff has to go out. So if I know these 30, these 90 days lag in between putting the order in and getting them built, that means 90 days past June is what it's going to be. So, so June, July, August, September. That's what I think. We'll see. We'll see. I may be the moron, right? Yep. I may be the moron. Definitely. Um, I see before we move on and get further in this chat, Phil asked a question regarding the Ron Fellows Performance School. Yes. And wanted to know if you paid the $200 to bring your de damage responsibility down to 2K. So I did not um, because that's my, that's my check of putting like not over driving, right? That's Basically what he has said in the past is it keeps him from being stupid on yeah, the track. There you go. So he's not, you know, on the hook for 8,000. Is it 8,000? 
Uh, yes, I think you're on the hook for 8000 or 5000 or something. A big number. You know, whatever of the damage, <laughs> yeah. if you uh, happen to be stupid and, you know, do something more than just busting a windshield because a rock flew up. Yes. <laughs> so I'll answer review tech. Uh, the second person wanted to be anonymous. They didn't want to be, they didn't want to be talked about. That's why it wasn't announced. It's got proof that it was done. If anybody challenges me, which is cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, they wanted to be anonymous, which they have that right to be. What are you talking about? He asked about PS five giveaway. Uh, Cam Clemens asked about truck giveaway. We'll do the truck giveaway very soon. I think very soon we're working on details. There's a lot of, there's a lot of legalities in giving away prizes. So the PS five, um, we did really, really quick, but the, um, that was, it was not a, it was not an item that was, that was over $600 retail right now market. There are a lot more, um, but how much you buy them for retail market was not over $600. So therefore, um, there's no 1099s and stuff like that. So with the truck, there'll be 1099s and all that stuff. You can hear the dogs barking. Somebody's, <laughs> somebody's here. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody is here. All right. So we want to get on to some ans- answering some questions. Um, Stephen Rapp asked about uh, earlier in the broadcast, he asked about um, what uh, is the best time to buy a car. So uh, generally speaking, and I talked about this in my order, um, order versus music, uh, excuse me, order versus off the lot that consistently throughout the year, the rebates are exactly the same. Now, if you are uh, a member of Costco and you want to buy a Chevy Bolt, right now is the time to be buying a 2020 Chevy Bolt or a 2021 Chevy Bolt. Um, those things are absolutely crazy. Um, one of my coworkers uh, is going to lease one today, 12,000 miles a year for like 240 a month. Taxes, everything hmm. done with no money down. Maybe a first payment or something, but 200 bucks down, right? So, I mean, that's a great payment. Not sure I like the vehicle enough to have it. Dogs are barking. Gotta love it. But, um, so go ahead. You got some questions? Ans- oh, ask I'm away. supposed to be finding questions. You here, here I'll, I'll do this one. How, how can I bust out of a lease uh, without pain? You can't. So, in a nutshell, what I like to tell everybody is you sign a contract. If it's 36, 29, 39, 24, whatever it may be, um, you sign a contract to use that vehicle for that period of time. So um, so you are obligated for those, let's say, 39 payments and any excess wear and tear that you may have outside of that. So if you do it prior to, then you're still obligated to make those payments. So the best ways to do it, is you can find someone who will take over the lease for you and make your payments, and that's how that's how you can kind of get away um, out of that. But you got to find somebody, and there are restrictions on that. So therefore, when that happens, that um, you know you may have you may have restrictions for um, you can't go out of state, right? GM Financials like that. GM Financials says you can't get somebody from out of state to take over the lease. They have to be in state. I helped someone who whose wife passed away, one of my customers, to find someone else. And I learned that and didn't know that. Okay. Earlier, and just because I'm curious, somebody was asking about the Callaway Silverado. Thomas Wilson was. Um, what is that? I so mean, I didn't know Ca- Callaway. Yeah, Callaway did. does the Silverado. I, I didn't know that they I didn't know that they did or not either. Um, but uh but no, it's just a it's just a Silverado. They're doing their Callaway package on. Um, personally, I I have met the Callaway guys. I'm friends with them on Facebook, and I'm not I'm not bad mouthing them or or saying anything negative. But um, they're they're restricted to manufacturer guidelines. So when they say 747 horsepower or whatever the numbers are, 700 horsepower, that's to the crank and not to the ground. So when you start modding your car, the biggest thing we talk about is how much horsepower touches the ground. And with that being said, it's really expensive um, to do that, to do that package and not have like the horsepower they say, cause we're all thinking to the ground. So personally, I think you could do, other stuff, um, other places, but they're really, really regulated to what they, what they can do and what they can't do because they are, uh, working directly with GM, just kind of like SCA trucks, right? SCA trucks, uh, does things because there are 
regulated um, by GM because we can ship directly to them. Just like with, with Callaway, we can dr- ship directly to Callaway if we're a Callaway dealer. We're not a Callaway dealer, but um, that's that's basically what it is. Okay. Thanks for that info, I guess. <laughs> you should have never shut the door on these dogs. I know, I should Because have. they're just going crazy now and, you know, they already, the person already left the house. Oh, gotcha. Um, okay, so let's talk about this. Is When is the offer incentives on a 2021 Tahoe Yukon lease loyalty? Oh, when will they offer incentives on the 2021 Tahoe Yukon, et cetera? So the, I highly doubt that we see many uh, because of supply and demand. We can't keep these things in stock. Um, I think there's some type of conquest rebate right now. Um, but, uh, but there's, there's really nothing and don't expect to see anything because we can't keep them in stock. So once, once you start seeing, um, like right now there is like across the country, there's only like 15, 20 days supply of Silverado's Tahoe's and zero day supply of Corvettes. Um, uh, to suburbans, there's like 10, 15 day supply. That's all there is across the country. So until that hits about 90, 120 day supply, that's when you'll see those incentives uh, come up. Okay. Do we think that there's going to be an interior update on the trucks ever? <laughs> so, so, you know, this is, this is what happens when you read the internet, right? So, so GM sold more trucks than Ford last year, and and we have consistently sold very close to what they are, but Ford Marketing sits there and says that the F-Series is the number one selling truck for 40 consecutive years or whatever number they're at now, right? Well, it's they're lying um, because that's not true, and we don't know what considers F-Series. Are they considering... F-150, 250, 350, 450, 550, et cetera. Um, when we talk about GM trucks, we're talking about light duty trucks that are 1500s. So, so we've outsold them last year and multiple times. And when you look over the, like the last 10, 15 years, I put this on my community page. Um, they didn't beat us by much. So, and, and that's what, that's what their marketing talks about is year after year that they beat us. And that's not true. So, so, People like our interior, right? I understand the internet says they don't, but people don't like all the frills. I see I see people every single day. I talk to people every single day, and they don't like the technology. The Chevy buyer doesn't, I should say. They don't like all this technology stuff because it's confusing. So um, Chevy does a great, like, what do I want to call it, um, market research, so that way they know what their buyers want and the way the truck looks now is the way the buyers look. What we will see on the truck, make sure I say this right. What we will see on the truck is if you look at the new Tahoe and the Malibu, just, you know, kind of keep that in mind. The Tahoe, the Blazer, Suburban, keep that in mind of what's going to, what that's going to look like in 2022. I would have to actually look at those again (laughs) to even know what that, could be. Although I did that Tahoe you had me sit in um, that we did video on a while back. That was quite comfortable. Yep. I did like that. Oh, super chat. So, yes. Yeah, so, uh, we're, we're, we get a lot of questions in here. You can see. So, every time a super chat comes in, we're going to definitely answer that because that's more most important the way we do things. So, uh, Scott asked, does a vehicle resale value appreciate if the previous owner was a dead Hollywood celebrity and, or does it depend on make model of the number of production units by a GM FY it's raining in Vegas. Ooh, raining in Vegas in March. Wow. That's interesting. It's raining everywhere. So the, so the, the issue that, that c- comes in play is yeah, sometimes a story does, um, does, does sell cars, right? So, you know, is it going to, bring a million dollars when it should bring 30,000 highly unlikely. Um, but unless but, you find the right buyer. Yeah. Right. Correct. You so, know, the right buyer who likes, who's like a dead, you know, diehard Elvis fan might buy. That's a different story, right? Elvis's vehicle for, you know, a million dollars. I mean, you see th- people like Jay Leno, his car collection. Oh my gosh. I don't know, you know, what people would pay for that. 
Right. But, you know, he's paid good money just for his cars. Right. Correct. And I'm sure he overpays for everything because he's got the means to do that. But, um, but yeah, so yes, they can, you know, I go, it goes back to the Seinfeld episode, um, that I, that I love so much. And, uh, uh, they, they, he bought, George bought John Voight's LeBaron, um, mm-hmm. but it was the long, wrong, wrong John Voight. John. <laughs> so he's like, he goes around that whole episode. He's like, I bought John Voight's, uh, LeBaron. Right. And, uh, um, and then they find a pencil and they're like, Oh my God, did John, John Voight bit this pencil. Right. And, uh, and then John Voight's in the, in, in there later on. So yes, it can D- don't expect a whole lot, but definitely you can, if you got some type of, of proof that it was his, um, then it is, you know, you look at Papa John, right? So, uh, that's a Louisville based international company. And, you know, he, he spent a lot of money to find his Camaro that he, sold to do that. So that meant a lot to him. So would that Camaro mean a lot to anybody else? Probably not, but that meant a lot to him. Yeah. I mean, it's all about finding that buyer who's willing to pay the price you want. Yep. All right. So let's talk about uh, dopey anteater 79. He's like, how do you feel about street speed? Seven, 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 one, seven, jumping his TRX. So I was going to do a video on this. And if you follow me on Instagram, um, I, I put up a thumbnail that I had made, Um, and the way I do stuff is I make my thumbnails first, I then do my title and then I do my video. I don't, I don't do it any other way than that now. And so I made the thumbnail and it was street speed setting his truck on fire. Um, the, over me was the truck jumping. And then on the other side of me was the truck just sitting there with those big wheels. And, and I was going to do a video on it. And I had already talked to Mike about it. I'm like, hey, do you mind? I'm not going to bash you or anything like that. I just, you know, but I want to make it click worthy. I want to make it fun um, and, and talk about it. So in a nutshell, I don't care. It's not my truck. It's 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 his property to do whatever he wants with it. Um, do I think it's crazy that you buy a hundred thousand dollar truck and trash it like that? Absolutely, I do. Um, but I get it as a, as a YouTube creator and as a marketer. I get what he's doing, and now he's doing it to that Dodge Challenger or Charger Challenger. Challenger. Um, you know, it looks and I like General Lee. Yeah, and I, I don't get to watch. Um, I don't get to watch a lot of YouTube, right? So um, I don't see all the content um, that that people do. But, uh, um, but it's, it's content, right? He's entertaining people and he was able to sell it and, and, and probably make his money back. I didn't get into the personal stuff. Hey, what did you do? You know, how'd you sell it? Blah, blah, blah. But it is what it is. My question is, is it really entertaining or is everybody just watching for the stupidity? And, you know, I understand the whole content creation and everything. And I know you hate hearing me say stuff, but I just can't bear the thought of somebody going out and wrecking their car on purpose. I get it. I, <laughs> I, I don't either. But now that I want to go jump my Corvette. No. One, one million, one Absolutely million likes. Not. On, <laughs> it's not your car. You can do it with my Tesla and then replace my Tesla. Okay. One million likes and I'll go jump the Tesla. I don't right. know where you're going to jump it at, but jump, I mean, I'll, I'm more I'll, than happy to get a new car. I'll jump it off the Sherman Minton bridge. I don't care. Let's million. get to our super chats. So, but, but no, but real, real quick before, <laughs> before that. Okay. Listen, so, number one, somebody was watching last week's live video and they thought that I disrespected you, which I thought was hilarious. About so I, what? just because of the way I talked to you and, and, um, uh, and I, I just thought that was hilarious. And, you know, I, I just mean, like, I remember you saying something after we got off that somebody was like, oh, yeah, she's probably cussing him out now. And it's no, like, no, no, it was like later on, like during the week I saw it. It's like, oh, wow. you know, like like I like I showed it to somebody and like, oh, God, the women are dry groups are going to come after me. Right. So well, you had that one video where I made a joke and you agreed with me and some woman started hating on you. And but yet she had been hating on, me. hating on somebody else yeah. because they were dissing your rap. But then she started hating on you because you were quote disrespectful to me. And it's like, I made the joke just because you agreed. I know you're joking, right? We, we specifically have spent our life joking around with each other, having fun and just making our marriage fun and enjoyable and you know we might say stuff that most people wouldn't say to somebody else but we know between the two of us that that's not what is meant oh yeah always have always having fun always have always having fun so um steven said 
Uh, Mike, just adding to my thank you for the awesome oh RST. <laughs> no, you're welcome, buddy. He, so Stephen bought my Walk Around Wednesday RST, and um, again, I just you know I, I tell people that the the my Walk Around Wednesdays is not to pr- to m- promote for me or to promote you know, car sales, right? I'm doing that because there's a lot of information out there and people just don't understand what's going on. So, um, with vehicles and stuff like that. And I think it's another way to showcase my love for Chevrolet and behind the scenes to kind of give you a little of insight that, um, I, I hired a consultant and we can't really talk about it much because of, of, uh, NDAs, but, um, the, in a nutshell, um, he's helping me and he's like, do these videos, these, these videos, people will love it. You'll love it. And so I'm finding some love into something that, that he's creating. So, uh, Kev, Kevin asked, um, my credit union got me three, seven, nine APR. Is that, is there any bit of having the dealership run my credit for any another bank? Will it hit my credit? So the answer is yes. Um, go into the, go into the dealership and say, Hey, listen, you need to beat my rate by big time to, to earn my business. It doesn't affect your credit score. Um, all those all those polls in a 28 day period counts as one poll. So if you pulled your credit, if your credit union pulled your credit yesterday, um, you got 28 days to go. Uh, and so with that being said, you go in there, and I know Wells Fargo, I know Capital One, I know Bank of America, um, M&T Bank, a couple other ones big like that. Um, you can get something in the 2% range because I'm assuming your 379 APR is based off of having a 740 or above credit score um, and you're going to be in all the loan to values. So you definitely can get something in the low threes to uh, high twos. So Michael asked, uh, if you could buy any Chevy truck, which one would it be and why? Probably going to buy a truck from you after the C8. Also, when do you think you're going to put the next set of orders for the C8? So um, truck, definitely like trail boss. Like we talked about this, I think last week or something that, um, oh no, I put it in my walk around Wednesday on a, on a trail boss. I think I do too many videos. Like if you knew the videos that I had shot and had planned out, oh my gosh. So have you done the trail boss? I did a trail boss er- early on trail boss. And I said that we need the LTZ and high country, equipment group in the trail boss. We need to have heads up display, stuff like that. But I love the trail boss and I love the way that looks, but I want more creature comforts. I want heated steering wheels. I want air conditioned seats. I want, you know, better radio systems. I, you know, that's stuff that I want. I want lane departure warning. I want blind spot indicators. I want all that stuff. So, um, so that's the truck I would buy is I would probably just buy a, um, trail boss, a, a LT trail boss. And go from there. I got a customer who's, um, I need to follow up with him actually. He wants to buy a custom truck and he doesn't want to spend all the money that you have to do. And he's just going to put leather in it and, you know, just do other stuff uh, on his own, which is cool too. And um, next wave of orders. Like, so I said at the beginning of the broadcast, what I think is going to happen with the C8 and that we're only going to have two more order cycles and I'm going to, I'm kind of watching that and I'm going to get that. I'm going to get a, an update out to everyone, uh, probably the first of April, just to make sure. Um, and if you're on my C8 list, you know that every single month I kind of give an update. Sometimes there's not much update. Sometimes there's a lot of update. And sometimes it's just like, eh, there's nothing. How you doing? Just making sure you know that I'm here for you. Um, and I'm not, I'm not ghosting you or, or just blink and leave you out in limbo to think goofy things or see all this dumb stuff that's on the internet. So, um, uh, so yeah, so I'll update probably beginning of April, but I think, I think, uh, it's going to go slow. And, and I talked to, um, I talked to the number one Chevy salesman in the world. Um, sometime this week, we're good friends. I've known him for several years. And I mean, he's how many, how many cars did he sell a couple years ago? 1400, 1500, 1600, uh, something, something like that. Something crazy. Like seven, just, uh, you can, you can Google Ali Retta, uh, A A L I R E. R E I D A, right? Uh, no, R E D A. R E D A. R E D A. Um, he's he's up in Dearborn, Michigan. Nobody asked Mike to sell and, anything. And uh, he's an awesome friend. And he yeah, he's a beast, man. He he sells like 150 cars a month by himself, and um, does awesome. But I was talking to him the other day, and he's he's doing a Z06. He's waiting for a Z06, and um, um, he's telling all his customers two years now. And I'm, and I'm thinking about getting ready to start doing that 18 months to two years, um, to get a car. It's insane. And that goes back off to what I was kind of talking about. Um, um, 
earlier in the video about the production schedule. I think I think 2021 production is going to go through the end of September, maybe in early October. And I know based off of what Mrs. Chevy dude was saying that everybody's saying July, August, and that I I can I would put money on a July, August is definitely not going to be it based off of the information that I've got right here. So it'll it'll be later in the year. Maybe go all the way to the end of the year. Okay. Well, Mike J. Autos asks, uh, hey, Mike, what is my 18 C7 worth with 2,000 miles, a 1LT auto performance exhaust? Thinking about selling it. Uh, what, what trim level was it again? 1LT. 1LT. Um, what year? 18. 18. Ooh, 18. That's a special year. There's very few 18s out there. Um, 18. 2,000 yeah. miles. 2,000 miles. I think they only built like 2,000. 18s or 5,000 or something like that. It was really, really low. Um, so number one, it's worth way too much, which is good for us, right? So um, an 18, one LT with 2,000 miles, um, that's going to sticker for 60, <laughs> right? That was the original MSRP. Um you're I thinking it, way too hard. I know. 45 grand. Yeah, I was going to say low 40s. Yeah, low 40s, 45 grand. Still you should probably get probably still get close to 50 retail money on it. They're they're going crazy. 1LT right. is the only goofy thing. Um and and it's not that's not a bad that's not a bad statement. That's just like when people walk in, they want two and three LTs and they want Z51 and stuff like that. And the, the old expression is there's an ask for every seat, right? I'm not scared of pretty much any vehicle out there. Um, you know, I got to look at it as a business standpoint of risk, but uh, a one LT car, especially in this environment right now, there's no risk to that. Um, it, it'll sell, it'll sell in single digit days uh, if the right dealership does the right thing. But um, uh, if you're close by and get the dealer, the car to me, um, I'll, I'll definitely buy it from you cash money immediately. I tried to buy, I tried to buy, oh, here's, here's the thing. I tried to buy a three LT 2007 C6 convertible last night. Um, uh, 13,000 miles Monterey red, love the red, love Monterey red offered the guy $25,000 for it. 25 grand. He turned it down. He said that was too low. I was like, well, NADA is 21 retail and I'm giving you 25 for it because I could probably still turn around and sell that car for 30 grand. A 2007 with 13,000 miles, I can still retail for 30 grand. So that's why I say what I say on your C7, um, that it, it probably, and that was a convertible if I didn't say that. Um, yeah, you, you can get a lot of money from it. It's crazy. Okay. Uh, I see in the chat, somebody asked, how proud are you that you sold the fastest C8? So let's oh, talk yeah. about Amelia's yeah, absolutely. C8. I think it's cool. It does nothing for me, right? No, Nobody's going to... No, and, and I appreciate you you knowing that, but I think it's cool. Um, I haven't really talked to Amelia much. I've talked to her here and there on occasion, but she's crazy busy. I'm crazy busy. Um, I'm going out to L.A. later this year, so hopefully I can meet up with her and maybe uh, maybe I'll do a video a month prior and like uh, 1,000 likes and make Amelia let me drive her car, <laughs> you know, something like that. I don't know, just having fun with it. But um, the – um. But no, I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome that I'm just a very, very teeny tiny part of her success. It's all on her. her she, she's the one. She's the one that does everything. She's the one who plans it. She's the one. She, her calendar is crazy uh, as far as the videos that she's got scheduled and the efforts and the long days that she puts in, uh, the long nights that she puts in, the 18, 19, 20 hour days that she works. She's she does she does amazing. She's awesome. I love it. Okay, and like just like last week. We have the questions about electric cars. So thoughts on the Corvette going electric and GM going electric by 2035. Oh, yeah. I I, I, I don't know about all this electric stuff. I, I think it's cool to have the option of going electric, but to like for GM to be like, we're going all electric. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? You know, we had so, this conversation last night. It's like if we ever bought a truck. I don't want my truck to be electric because I want to be able to haul stuff, you know, use a truck for its purpose of hauling and, you know, yeah, having a trailer and all that type of stuff. But I'll drive an electric car any day. Yeah. Wait, and, till, wait till Sunday's video. <laughs> and I, huh? Wait till Sunday's video. 
I didn't think that was going. Now I decided to push it live earlier. Oh my goodness. I know I'm moving things around you again. You need to stop moving stuff around <laughs> because I can't keep up. I got it on the calendar. You have to just look at the calendar. That's all you have to do. Oh, no, 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 no. I did move it on the calendar. <laughs> but um, basically, you know, I personally love driving electric and I can't wait for an electric Corvette, especially if it can put up numbers like the Tesla claims, uh, you know, that there, there is some fun with that stuff. Yep. I'm with you. Um, Chris asked on the super chat. So we appreciate your super chat. Um, he asked, uh, V six diesel or 5.3 liter V eight and why? So I can tell you right away, 5.3 liter V eight. And the reason why, um, not the diesel is, is because I don't see any benefits to the diesel. I don't see the fuel economy there for the cost that it, to go. I think it's only twenty five hundred dollars now to go to that diesel. Um, but uh, you know, unless you're going to keep your truck forever and and take the longevity out of the diesel, um, I don't think there's any major benefits to to that. So the five threes tried and true. Um, I know we got the lifter issues. I know we got the injector stuff or the lifters and with the direct injection and and all that stuff, or not direct injection, I'm saying that wrong, for the uh, active fuel management, which is now called dynamic fuel management. Um, but but in a nutshell, I'm not afraid. I can start up a 200,000-mile Silverado today and tell you right now if it's a good engine or not. I can't I can't do that on a diesel. So uh, diesels cost more to fix. They cost more to maintain. But the, like, the nice thing about them is they last forever. But this is a new diesel engine, and we don't know if it's going to last forever. Like we, know, like we know the Duramax is, right? The Duramax is a different story. The 6.6 liter Duramax is a different story um, on that. We know that truck, what's going to happen. So I'm, 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 with the, I'm the gas guys for sure on this. So Stephen wants to know if we ever grilled up our Tomahawks. We did. Uh, we got no. We do one a month. You, we talked about doing it last week, and I was going to do it last Sunday, and then you're like, "No, let's just hold off another week." So that's Sunday's, uh, yeah, meal. So yeah, we. My brother-in-law works at a um, butcher shop. He's he's, I'm forty, two, so he's thirty eight, um, and or am I forty three? You're forty three. Oh man, you're old. He's thirty nine or twenty. Yeah, he's thirty nine. Um, four, I'm 43. Oh my God. Um, so he's 39 he years turns old. 40 this year. I know. So, <laughs> and then, so he, he's worked at this butcher shop since he was, uh, 15, 16 years old. So he's worked there his entire life. Only job he's ever had. And so, so we go, we drive four hours to see him and we literally load up, uh, our Yeti cooler and other stuff and drive back home with it so yeah we, we so we cook up a tomahawk like once a month is what we've been doing so mike j auto said thanks c7 still uh i drive my 20 super and my 20 mustang gt as daily the vet still sitting in the car in the car left i'll pm you on your cell cool i'm here for him <laughs> I like he's got oh look he's got um he's got all of his cars in his in his uh profile picture love it Oh, that's so small. I can't see it. Is that, right a dumpster? Now. <laughs> is that a dumpster on the left side of your? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you mean a Mustang? Yeah, it's a Mustang. <laughs> a dumpster. <laughs> just kidding. So, um, geez, I've lost my train of thought on things now and where we were at. What's the, what's the, <laughs> Robin, Robin's nest asks, what's the MPG on a 12 foot box truck? Two, three? I don't know. I have no idea. Definitely, definitely not calculating that. Yeah, I mean, how do you how do you determine? Of, go ahead. Kind of one of those things is like, if you have to drive that, you're not exactly worried about the gas consumption. Yeah, that's a purpose vehicle. So, uh, Mark asked, uh, how do you determine car value on limited production car? It depends on it depends on how limited production, right? So, like I just mentioned, 2018 C sevens. Those those are definitely limited, right? They only made like five thousand or two thousand or something like that for the entire year. Um, where those are limited, and I know those are limited. General consumers' perception is they don't care, right? They 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 want nineteen, they want seventeen, they they don't care. There's obviously nineteens were built from January twenty eighteen till when did twenty nineteen stop? July twenty nineteen? July twenty when did they stop? Something like late nineteen, so they were they were a year and a half, almost two years on the market, right for twenty nineteen. So, um, so consumers don't care. You as an owner, me as an owner, me as a dealer, we get it, but general consumers don't care. So we look at those um, 
cars as as we know a market. We have a market on them. So like let's look let's talk about Z28, uh Camaro Z28, Gen 5 Z28 that was only went for 2 years. There's only 3000 of them out there. So those are probably still bringing big money. We look at Pontiac G uh G8 GXPs. Um those things are still bringing $35,000 retail today. If I could find one for 30 grand, I'd buy it all day long. You know, um and there's a cult following with that car as well. Um Hummer H2s. Hummer H2s are still bringing mid 40s, you know, and they haven't been they haven't been made for 11 years now. Oh my gosh, can you believe that 11 12 years for H2? So, so it just depends on the vehicle and it just depends on on how limited it is. So, but it's 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 interesting, but there's a market for uh everything. Jay super chats in. So again, with super chats, you guaranteed to get your question answered. We answer all super chats 100%. And as you see, the feeds going crazy strong um, that we try to read every single one of those and get those too. But the super chats, we get 100%. Uh, JJ says, Hey, I heard invoice price is what a dealer paid for the vehicle and it's less than MSRP. Could I start the negotiation from the invoice price? So yeah. So in the market today, it's pretty tough. Um, uh, literally, literally I screenshotted, um, I was, I'll post it on, I'll probably post it on my Facebook and maybe Instagram. Instagram's not really that, that spot for it, but Facebook, I will post it on for sure. Um, uh, I literally saw a car dealership employee bragging about how much money he made on a, a Kia Telluride in a, a Facebook group today. And, uh, they don't know I'm in this Facebook group because I not using my real name, but I watch these Facebook groups and um, in car sales, and that's kind of where I get a lot of my strategy from and what I'm talking about um, on some of these scams and stuff like that. So, and they'll never, they'll never find me. They'll never know who I am. So the, so that's what I did. And this dude's like, yeah, I made $13,000 on a Kia Telluride and he sold it over MSRP for that. And the Kia Telluride is definitely a hot product, but um, you know, just why anybody would pay over and then they didn't pay over 13,000. They probably paid five, 10,000 over. And then, you know, he gets paid in reserve and stuff like that. So it just depends on the vehicle. But the best thing or the best advice to do is use true car and true car is a lead generation tool for car dealers, right? True car is, is pretty much on the consumer side, but they're also on the dealer side too, because that's who's paying them uh, the money. But true car does tell you based off of data that they receive from dealers they work with of what people are paying. And, and some of the biggest dealers use true car. So there's, it's good data. But uh, if you go to true car and see the invoice, then you can kind of build it and see the invoice price, you'll be fine on that. But at the same time, if the dealership is is doing stuff, then you know, they're they're placing good prices on the internet, there's not gonna be much negotiation right now, especially with some of these vehicles that are just super hard to get a hold of. Okay. Um, Richard asks, I'm looking at buying a Subaru Outback. Every dealership I've emailed asks if I want to make an appointment. It kind of feels like they're preparing for an ambush. Is this a new norm? I don't think with Subaru. Subaru, Subaru is one of those dealerships that... Um, don't really screw their customers over um, because Subaru buyer is a little bit different buyer. They're definitely more affluent buyer. Um, but typically with my dealings with most Subaru dealers that they're just, they're, they're trying to just be helpful and they're probably just going off based off of their um, consumers. What, what's normal. So they may, like, I don't know about this. I'd have to ask my Subaru store cause we do have a Subaru store. Um, I would have to ask them, in regards to what is the norm for them, if they're trying to get people in or they're working things over the phone, but definitely if do what's comfortable for you, right? You're in control. You're the boss, you're the buyer. So if you're like, Hey, listen, I'm not coming in and you can blame COVID, right? We blame COVID for everything now, bad customer service. Oh, I'm sorry. It's COVID. So, um, you know, car gets wrecked. Oh, I'm sorry. It's COVID, uh, you know, but, uh, so, with that being said, you know, just like, listen, I don't have time to come in cause I'm busy. I don't have time to come in cause it's COVID. I don't have time for this, but listen, if you give me, I want this vehicle you got in stock. If, if you do everything right, then we're good to go. You should be able to buy pretty much any Subaru at invoice, which is going to be about $2,000 off max on any Subaru. Um, so it just depends. And then Subaru does, you know, really good rates like 0.9 or 1.9 stuff like that. 0% on certain things. I mean, would it have anything to do with the BDC? Could be. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, very when true. you put an email, send an email, put in a lead to a dealership, they're what's called BDC. They're 
internet people take that information and then they're trying to set appointments to get you in and get, you know, and they're the ones you're talking to half the time, not really actually salespeople. It just depends on the dealership though. Some are salespeople. Yes, correct. So the BDC is what's called business development center. And those people's one job is to get you the info and most importantly, to set an appointment to sell a car. So depending on the dealership, they may get paid off of setting appointments. So if you're talking, and I'm glad you brought this up, it's very, it's, it's, it's on, it's on point. If they, if you're talking to a BDC rep, which most likely you are, um, a good dealership, you do not call in and talk to a car salesman. That's, that's a good dealership. I, I haven't, I haven't talked to a customer on the phone that's called in and said, yeah, I'm looking for a Silverado. I haven't talked to them. I haven't t- 2011, somewhere around 2012. I haven't talked to a customer since on a phone. So, um, so with that being said, yes, that person may get paid on appointments. So yes, that's what they're trying to do is get you in so they get paid. Um, again, um, an appointment is when you're going in to buy a car too, right? So keep that in mind that, hey, listen, if they get paid on appointments, and you don't even have to have this discussion with them, but you're just knowing the knowledge and having the knowledge behind the scenes that this is what their game plan probably is, then you'll be like, listen, I will set the appointment, but I want to do everything uh, over the phone. I want to negotiate the car over the phone. I want to get my car appraised over the phone. I want to do this over the phone. And then once I've got everything lined out, um, that's when, um, we'll, we'll get it, we'll get it done. You see who's here? Uh, yeah. I <laughs> knew he was coming. Oh, Hey Zach, It's a how are surprise you? for you. Oh, okay. Come here. <laughs> He's like, I, I'm not getting on <laughs> camera. No, I, I knew he was in town and told him, I'm like, you can stop by anytime you're in town and see your parents, Come but, here. you know, Oh, gotcha. So yeah, surprise, surprise, surprise. We have a, we have a special guest. I was going to ask him if you wanted to be on uh, here slide, you have to slide way over here. So, and you probably have to get down on your knees. Cause, <laughs> yeah. cause you see where they're seeing you. He's like, I got to wear a mask in here. <laughs> no, I don't. So this is, uh, this is our son, Zach, who's a police officer. And, uh, uh, if you don't remember, we're not telling anybody where you where your police officer at. So <laughs> he's gonna get mauled. Yep, the dogs, have, <laughs> the dogs haven't seen him forever. When's the last time you were here? The end of ago? January. End of January. End of January. February, March. Yeah, two months. So how's uh, how's work going? Good. Any exciting without uh, without divulging information to get you in trouble? Anything exciting happening? Uh, Keeping you busy with the warmer weather? You have to come closer to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> the so, mic. <laughs> I know at least. Um, when was it? Were you, let's just do this way because we don't want to. We don't want to give information that's going to get you in trouble. So, like, you're a lot busier now. Kind of. Uh, I know once I get on some middle shift, it'll be a lot um, busier. So he's. That. So he. You're moving. Um, you're moving from days right now. Yep. Um, you work from what's what's your work schedule? What time? Two two p.m. to ten p.m. and coming in the summertime, yes, you're gonna you're gonna be busier. Are you gonna be in like a nice part of town? Are you gonna kind of be in a rough part of town? Where are you gonna be at? Uh, I was told it's gonna be the busiest for that district. Busiest for that district. Okay, so he's gonna he's gonna be busy. So we can't we can't go into detail just because of privacy laws and their social media um, guidelines and stuff like that. So his birthday is later this month. And I almost, I almost, uh, I hadn't told him yet, but I was going to say that we should do a, um, uh, live show with him on it because his birthday is on the 23rd, 24th. What, what's your birthday? Oh, the 26th. And, uh, and how old are you going to be? 26, 26 on the 26th. So, so yeah, I thought about like doing something. You have something. a 26 year old? I know. Isn't it Gosh, crazy? Gosh, you're old. He's going balder than me though. Look at this. <laughs> I know his hair is way too long right now. Yes, it's driving how, me nuts. How can you have that long As hair? As a mother, I'm like, I want to take the, oh, I threw those away. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I want to take the clippers to his head, but I threw them away. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. FTO is going good. Yep. So you're getting ready to be in your third month of FTO. And um, you, uh, and then your fourth month, you're by yourself. Do you have an FTO officer fourth with you? Fourth month, I'm back to where I was in the beginning. Yep. Fifth month's when you're by yourself. You get your car in your fifth month? Yeah, I should. Should? And you don't get to take it home or do you get to take it home? No. You don't get to take it home. You have to go get it every day. And then when do you get to take a car home? Uh, a year after probation's done. 
a year after probation. When's probation done? A year after. <laughs> a year after FTO. May June of 2022. Oh, cool! Awesome. What has you in town to see me? You came down to see me. Uh, no, you know no. we're chop liver. <laughs> You're chop liver. I'm he, not. He only comes to see his fiance. <laughs> I found out when I looked at his uh, um, toll bridge uh, thing that he was down here on February 9th and didn't even bother oh, to didn't set, even come, come over? over and say hi. Oh, wow. So today I was like, well, you know, you can say hi to us once in a while. All right, so we're asking, we're answering questions live on, well, on YouTube. And we this have question, super chats that we Yeah, that's get what to. I'm getting to. Okay. So I just got done paying my first new truck, 2015. It was a 36G, never missed a payment. Do you think I can get 0% on a new truck, 780 credit score? Zach, did you listen to this? This is, I was going to have you answer it. I don't know the question. So, so I bet you do. I just got done paying my first new truck, uh, Silverado, 36,000, never missed a payment. He's got a 780 credit score. Do you think he can get 0%? Why do you say no? You probably can't hear him much. He said no. So why do you think? Why do you think no? So thirty six never. So thirty six grand never gotten missed a payment zero percent on next car with a zero percent what like APR? Yeah, zero percent APR. No. I mean that's never. I don't think that's ever going to be a possibility. To no. Do so anyways. the main, so what happens is the manufacturer is saying, listen, we're giving zero percent as an incentive. So not like going into a bank and getting 0%, but the manufacturer is given 0%, but only the best people qualify for it. So do you think a 780 credit score would qualify? Um, I mean, it probably could. Say yes. <laughs> 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 say could. Basically, you're showing that your father has not taught you the car business well enough. <laughs> right, I know. You're making me look like a thank fool. thank goodness... <laughs> You always come to us before you make purchases <laughs> and you buy your cars from your father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 780 credit score should get you 0%. So you shouldn't have an issue, but GM financial is kind of picky. So about 760 is, is the area seven, 750, I think is the area um, to, to get there. So uh, let's go to this next one, Zach, see if you see if you do and redeem yourself. Where's it at? Where is it at? The selling um, used car yep. to Carvana so, versus um, a dealer. Selling used car to Carvana versus a dealer. Good idea. Um, well, you sold your, what was it? One of your Camaros to Carvana. And you said, or at least I know you said you got more out of it than what well, you got with Bachman. So yeah. With anybody, right? So yeah. So um, I did run a, uh, two different car deals. I did run two different cars uh, through Carvana the other day and they were pretty dead on. So my daughter reached out to me and says, Hey, what's the trailblazer like? How much is it? Told her. And I'm like, listen, you, you didn't put a big down payment on your car. So you're going to have some negative equity. Here's where we're at. This is the most money you're going to do. So they gave her 14 grand for her car, which is probably worth about 12. But so yeah, so Carvana is still doing okay. They're, they're shrinking what they're giving people. But uh, they're still they're still doing okay. Thanks, buddy. Good job. <laughs> okay, back to our next super chat. Supposedly, HD diesel trucks hold their value better than the gas version, given HD diesels cost ten more k or ten k more than the gas version in five years and a hundred thousand miles. Would the diesel still be worth ten thousand dollars more? Yeah, so there are a whole lot more diesel trucks on the road, uh, HD trucks, than half tons. So they, they certainly will. And um, for example, I've got a 19 setting on my lot right now, single rear wheel diesel truck, 20 something odd thousand miles, still bringing $61,000. And that's a good deal. So I had people in there looking at it today and that's not the truck they wanted. I just talked about it. And, and dad, dad was like, so like the older generation, they're always going to be like, that's too much money. Right. Um, the son knew the market much better. And he's like, Oh no, dad, that's, that's a good, that's a really good deal. That's, that's exactly what they're bringing. So yes, diesel will always bring more money, um, especially when you start getting up to 150, 200,000 miles, that diesel is going to bring a whole lot more money than that gas truck ever will. Next question. Oh, next question. I lost my question. Um, but I see a lot of people like there's been a question about, uh, I think, I don't even know who it was. Somebody asked, I, oh, AC, here it is. I found it. AC asked, 
He says, I know you're not crazy about electric vehicles, but if you had to pick one, which one would you choose and why? And let's go there. So I, you personally, yeah, me personally, I, I think Chevy has got the best technology as far as the battery technology, but Tesla's got the best technology for fun technology, right? So, um, doors opening up on the model X, um, the fun, silly things like the whoopee cushion, um, you know, just dumb stuff, dumb stuff like that. Right. So that's, that's my personality. I like dumb stuff. What? You're the camera. You like, the camera's on you. <laughs> you like to sit there and so, uh, use the whoopee cushion but, while I'm in the but passenger not, seat. But not, not serious. Like, I like dumb technology. I like, I like, that's my, that's where I geek out at. That's where I have a lot of fun with. So at Christmas time, if I can play that song and the, and the, the Tesla lights start blinking and playing song and open the doors, that's just dumb for me. I, 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 I that's like my drug, right? So like, I don't drink um, much at all, hardly at all. Never, never, definitely don't do any type of drugs. Don't gamble. Um, don't party. Don't do anything goofy like that. But no, you just if spend it, all your money on when it comes technology. When it comes to technology, that is definitely my my drug. And cars, cars. I don't spend. A lot. I'm pretty good on cars, but but when it comes to when it comes to technology and and electronics, like I'm surprised I got an iPhone 11. I really am. But it is what it is. Well, you know, it's. You're trying to be good to an extent. <laughs> right. But um, so, you know, have you even looked into anything, any of the other electric vehicles out there? A Volkswagen. Much <laughs> 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 um, uh, But uh, no, you know, I, I really think. No, not really. So I, I'll say this again, and I say it over and over and over again. If GM would make the damn tr- uh, Blazer an electric vehicle, they would blow every single company out of the water. That's the only thing they've got to do is make the Blazer an electric vehicle. And if they do that, then everything is done. No no car All company. All they need to do is make a regular vehicle yes. into electric. Yes. I, I don't get what they're doing. I have no idea. This whole futuristic crap. The Bolt EV is ugly. The Bolt is ugly. The I don't like the EUV I, is not too bad. Not too bad, right? So, but the seat, but the seats are horrible. I don't like the seats in the Bolt, and and it's like, make the Blazer, make the Tahoe, a freaking electric car. We'll sell a million of them. That's all you have to do. It's so simple, and I don't get it. And and okay, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm really I'm surprised rant. that people have gone for the Tesla uh, Cybertruck. Because they, they're going for the Tesla Cybertruck because it's 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 alien, right? So it's it's they're going for it because alien sits there and gets a really awesome cash, interest free cash infusion from people, so that way he can keep his business running and and he's very smart on that way. But he creates a cult following, and that's what we need to do. You want a cult? I, I'm I'm scared there. <laughs> Dan says Tesla sucks. You better have another car. And it, and and I wouldn't say that they suck because there's not any any car company out there that doesn't suck. You know, if we were talking 2000, Daewoo, Kia, Hyundai, they they sucked in 2000 when I got into the car business. I would never ever buy one of their cars. But today's market, everything is good. Even though I'm the Chevy dude and I like to bash Ford, but it's it's Ford makes good vehicles, right? So so but. What, what people don't know with Tesla, which you can you can respond better than I can on this, is they have more problems than most people think. And and you don't know what it's like buying from the manufacturer until you get in there. They they will change something one day, and, and the next day they do something completely different, and you have no control over that. And if you bought XYZ today, and XYZ is five grand cheaper tomorrow, they're going to tell you tough luck. You know, you don't have anybody to go after. You don't have a car sales manager that is trying to build a relationship with you or keeping your business at our dealership to do something that maybe the manufacturer wouldn't do. You know, the manufacturers are very cut and dry. GM micromanages you to death as an employee. And 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 they 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 just they they have cut and dry stuff. Call just call them up and ask them. It's it's crazy. Yeah, um, you know, 
I think this is like the biggest point you can make with that is Tesla just did a refresh on their S's and X's. Yep. Those vehicles are not even available, but they stopped production the end of, I think, December. Yep. Somewhere around there. And people who had orders sitting in there waiting for a car to come up match because they don't always produce your car based on your order. They sometimes sit there and have a car that's just getting produced and it matches everything you want. So they assign that VIN to you. And it's not, you know, oh, I put my order in. This is my production date. And that's the exact car I'm getting. Sometimes they'll, you know, your production date could be March 3rd. And they found a car on February 15th that matches your, you know, once. So they'll give you that one instead. And so there was people who had orders in that ended up not being able to get their order because of the stop production and then come out and, oh, by the way, if you want to continue with this order, it's going to cost you another twenty, thirty thousand dollars. Right, and, and because she, that's how much they raised a lot of their cars. Oh yeah, we we it were, wasn't like a Corvette. Oh, you're ra- we're raising the price by a thousand dollars. Yeah, it was twenty, thirty thousand yeah. dollars. So we we were looking at a Model X, looking at new and used. We we're looking at used, and we were at one fifteen, one twenty on a new one. Is that right? I can't remember. Um, a new one was going to be about 113. 113. And now we'd be at 150. Uh, I haven't looked lately, but somewhere around well, there. Well, back in the day, we looked and we're like, oh, crap, these are now $150,000. So we went from 113 to 150, and that that's that's canceling me out. I'm not spending that much money. So, But um, but it's, it's, it's absolutely insane. Absolutely crazy. Um, master, I can't say that. Mastiff Nomad. Oh, Mast- oh Mastiff Nomad. I see it now oh on, big, on the big screen. I, it wasn't on the big screen. <laughs> I can't read. Do you need to go to the eye doctor? <laughs> yes. I got contacts, but I mean. <laughs> Do you think Jeep will bring back the Wagoneer name since the Cherokee Nation don't want their name being used anymore? Oh, I had not I heard kind, this. I kind of heard it, but I didn't get into it. Cancel culture there. Yeah, it's cancel. Oh, we were just talking about that before we got live about cancer culture. Cancel culture. I, I don't know. I mean, this whole cancel culture stuff. I mean, I don't want to get into political stuff because I don't watch it. And anybody could anybody could roast me and just like not roast me. Anybody can out debate me on politics because I don't watch it and I'm not. I'm not. I don't have the knowledge to do it. Right. That's like that's like asking me to um, to build and spec a Lamborghini Huracan. I, I couldn't do it. I, I don't sell Lamborghini Porsche GT three RS. Tell me when, tell me how fast do you get me one? No idea. So I don't know. So they, that it's, it's crazy about this cancel, this cancel culture stuff. And I know there's been a couple other things. We were talking about Pappy Le Pew <laughs> on stuff, stuff that's, that's, you know, the Washington Redskins last year, which they talked about that for five or six years. But, um, I could see that happening. And actually you bring that up and stuff. It's, uh, I could see that happening. Bring something back. Is Wagoneer, would Wagoneer be offensive? I mean, that's from the old West, right? A Wagoneer or a wagon. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what the meaning of the name of, of it is. I think it's just a name. Yeah. Who but, knows? Yeah. Who knows? So, um, JT Mustang 09 asked earlier, he said, I know you stated that you don't like to sell Dodge cars. I'm interested in a challenger at the Bachman Dodge dealership. Would you consider selling it? If if we have it in stock, yes. So, um, yeah, I just I I don't really like the managers over there. <laughs> they're they're morons. So I just I just don't even go over there. So and and half our store thinks that way. They're like, I don't even want to go over there and sell sell anything. So and, and if they're watching this and see this, I don't really care either. So they can fire me tomorrow over it. I don't really care. But um, the uh, um, they make things difficult. So, so yes, I will, because I'll go in there and, and battle for you and fight for you and get things done simple. But, uh, yeah, just reach out to me, chevydude.com, put something on my calendar and, uh, we'll, we'll communicate. I saw somebody earlier. I, I missed it. Somebody said that they have, uh, I don't know where my phone's at, but, uh, uh, that they have an appointment on Monday, like 10 AM to talk to me. They're on here. I didn't see who it was. Oh, I didn't. Bob, hey, how you doing? But I didn't see it earlier. I saw your name earlier, and I forgot. Maybe they tried making a Tahoe electric, but maybe the range was bad. I don't think so. You know, they can, they can, they got the Hummer. The Hummer's gonna be a big vehicle. It is a big vehicle. It's gonna be heavy. They can make it. They can make it. 
GM's smart on this stuff. Yeah, I mean. Monica says, I'm going to a dealership tomorrow for a Honda CRV. Can you quickly tell me how not to get ripped off? <laughs> so, so. She said quickly. Yes. So, I don't know if you can do that quickly. <laughs> I can't. So, no, the biggest thing is just do your due diligence at home and, um, you know, know what know what they're going, what they're being sold for. Look at truecar.com and see what they're being sold for, stuff like that. And um, just don't pay for over accessories. Honda dealerships are really, um, some of them, they're hit and miss on dealerships that add things and don't add things. So just be careful on it. And um, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a video um, on the five worst manufacturers to buy from. And it's not because the manufacturers make bad cars. It's because the dealerships who represent these manufacturers have a history, in my opinion, and from what I see to, try to scam you and Honda's close. Honda's close. They're in the top. They'd be in the top 10, probably maybe top eight. Just depends on scamming. Yeah. Because they, cause there's not much markup in there and they have some rules behind the scenes that nobody knows about as far as what they can sell vehicles for. So they, um, they are, um, they find, they try to find, they try to find money other ways, which would be addendums and rip off stickers and mud flaps and, rain guards and stuff like that. Okay. I could see that. Uh, Of course, all dealerships. Mastiff Mastiff said, buy from me. I don't sell Honda. (laughs) I sold Honda. Yes, you definitely could. Um, You know, when you don't have much markup or you don't have much you can do, other places dealers are going to try to find something else to um, buy or, you know, get you to buy. And Monica said she's going to a used lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. A used so, Honda so yeah, on, on a used, okay, I'm glad you said that. So on a used one, yeah, you just need to look at Car Gurus, True Car, um, Kelly Blue Book, and just make sure that that's a good price. And only on a, on a used car, only pay the purchase price, only pay the dock fee, which I know, which I know people out there like, no, oh, never pay the dock fee, never pay over $75 for the dock fee. And, and I'll, I'll say this to every single person who ever writes a comment on my, on my channel, never pay more than $75 dock fee. Please justify that. Where did you come up with that number? Because somebody told you on the internet not to do it. That person has no idea what they're talking about when they tell you that. And, and I'm, and I don't like doc fees, right? So I'm, I'm anti doc fee. If I own a dealership, my goal, I'm not saying that it's going to do it. I'm going to do it. It just depends on business practice. But if I own a dealership, when I own a dealership, my goal is to not have a dealer fee, right? So that's my goal, but it just depends on market and everything else. Um, if I, do you have to have a doc fee? It's going to be very minimal, very reasonable. Um, that that nobody's even going to blink an eye at it, right? Hundred bucks, two hundred bucks. Nobody's going to be like, Psh, "That's fine." Um, so, but uh, um, but yeah. So, purchase price of the vehicle, sales tax, doc fee, and any types of legitimate DMV fees, and and don't pay anything more than that. Um, I saw someone ask about Silverados uh, when they're going to announce twenty two Silverado stuff. So I don't know when they're going to announce it, but 22 Silverados are not going to start production until the week of 920. So um, the last consensus um, for Silverados for 2021 uh, is going to be April 2nd. So we, oh no, that's HD, July 1. So I would say sometime in July is when we will see... um, the 2022 truck revealed. You can put that out there. 20 in July. You think. Yep. So, um okay, tech and motorcycles. My question is, your wife mentioned Tesla. I'm currently looking at a used Model 3, but have fallen in love with Rocky Ridge and some of the SCA 1500 style mod trucks. But wondering if I should just uh just when, waiting on it. Just waiting on yeah. it. Yeah. That is that is Two wide spectrums of vehicles. I, SCA yeah. six inch lifted truck model three. So, um, you know, I this is what I tell everybody: buy what you love, buy what you have passion for, buy what gets your interest going, and obviously what you can afford as well. And and neither one of those vehicles are bad vehicles. I'm not a Model Three person. I think Model Threes are very cheap. I think Elian has cheapened the market with the Model Three, and um, everything about the Model Three is cheap, um, down to the door handles. Why don't they have presentable door handles like on the Model S? Right here, money. That's the only reason. The only reason manufacturers do things is money. Uh, Two thousand 
16 Traverse. I think it's 16. Don't hold me on that. But the model year between the Traverse third row seat of moving up and being molded into it, saved the manufacturer, GM, saved them $15 per unit. $15 <laughs> per unit. So if you don't think the manufacturers are looking at pennies, you 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 better you better check because yes, they changed the traverse and that was a bad change. That was a horrible change on on my, in my opinion uh, to do that. So buy what you like and have and have fun. So uh, a lot of Tesla questions. I offers her eight sixty asked, do you think Tesla will ever start a race team? Would be interesting to see in all EV race series and motorsports. Yeah, if it's going to be a whole like what. 30 minutes, if that. Well, you, you say that, but I think I remember, I think there's some type of like Formula One electric race car out there that they have leagues on. I don't, I, I've never, I've, I mean, unless it's getting solar power or something along those lines, there's no way to keep that well, thing going. Well, what hap- here's what happens is, is, is you have really long extension cords that, that move oh. as you go, as you go around the track. So, Kind of like those old uh, track uh, cars that you could get that. Yeah, yeah. The little, R- I don't even know what they were called. RC, RC cars, I guess. I don't know. No, they're, well, they know. weren't remote control. You had the little thing my brother had. What was that thing you held in your hand? A remote control. Okay, so they weren't <laughs> called remote control cars. Next. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> the, but my brother had one or had several, and we always had them set up in the basement. And they'd, and they'd rack. They just go around in a circle until yeah. you got going too fast, and they flew <laughs> off. But no, I'm sure there's like there's like a Formula One race car that's electric, and I've and it was really weird. I've only seen like clips on like Instagram or something like that, and I haven't seen them for years. Formula E, Josh just wrote Formula E, so there are there are stuff out there. So it would be really cool to see. I just want to know how they're keeping a battery going long enough to, you know, do that work. So here's your here's your task for next Friday's live. Uh, do some research this week and report back to how they're doing this. <laughs> we want a full two page breakdown. And I want Josh it. says slot cars. <laughs> slot. That's what yeah, it was. Slot cars. Slot cars. Yeah, yeah. I knew yeah. it wasn't RC. Yeah. So, uh, uh, two plus two is four minus one. That's three. I like that name. It's hilarious. It says Rocky Ridge lift seems kind of cheap. So I don't know. I think Rocky Ridge is still owned by SCA. I think they're the same company. Maybe they're not. Um, but I can speak for SCA. SCA is um a really good lift and i've had some people i have people on the channel all the time and i read every single comment right so um people are like it's it's too much money and some people are really smart and be like no it's not too much money because it takes us six months to build these trucks and um from start to finish so um and that's what that's what the consumer doesn't have to worry about is okay i buy a truck today and now i'm going to ship it off to somebody to build it and could you do it for 10 grand less maybe but you don't have to worry about the time and the time is the most important thing. But the, the, the SCA trucks are really, really good. And I, and I love them. Um, AC says, don't be so mean. <laughs> so I know you're going to get so, people thinking that you're like super disrespectful and all this stuff. When it's really you who's disrespectful to me. No, I bow down to the master. <laughs> El Conquistador, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I definitely don't do that. But <laughs> You know, Formula One is now hybrid too. Oh, really? I've never been to a Formula One race. It'd be fun. I've been to two. Uh, been to two Indy 500s. Um, I went to the Michigan race right after the Indy 500 one year, and I've never been to a NASCAR race. Yeah. Who makes the best all-around vehicle? Can you answer that? Well, I know what the answer should be. Do I know what the answer truly is? No, no. I mean, like I said earlier, it's Chevy, but uh, (laughs) that's what I I mean. And that's a non-biased opinion. That is the politically correct (laughs) answer. No, you know, there's nobody out there who makes the best of anything, right? If, 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 if we had the best of anything, then we wouldn't have service departments at our dealerships, but there's not a bad vehicle on the road. And I think Kia makes some really cool looking vehicles. Um, you know, I kind of wish sometimes every time I see a Kia past me, I'm like, why can't we have that car at Chevy? But, um, so no, I don't think there's a bad vehicle on the road and Chevy gets, you know, based off of my comments on YouTube, Chevy gets a bad rap and there, and that's, and that's not fair to Chevy. Chevy makes really good cars and that's not a biased opinion. That's just, that's just me knowing the product. Um, but everybody out there, everyone out there, 
um, definitely, definitely um, makes makes good cars, 100%. Okay, several people on here are doing my work for me, and they're saying that uh, the E Formula One or whatever it's called, they basically use two cars in a race to cover the distance, and their races are about one hour long. Oh, really? I'm telling you. An electric you, car you, you on hit, the track is not going to work in that type of racing. You could sit there and do a, maybe a couple laps around the track type of thing, or drag racing can happen, but you're going to deplete your battery real quick. Yeah, I mean, you hit it on the head. You said well, if the race is 30 minutes long, right? So if they're using two cars and running about an hour, there, there you go. Why don't they just use 10 cars? You know? I don't know. So... It's, it's, uh, that'd be, it'd be interesting. Everything's going electric. I'm not, I'm not a fan of everything going electric. I'm not a fan of that, but it is what it is. So, uh, difference between the, the ZR2 and the Bison, the ZR2 and the Bison are the same vehicle. The Bison is, um, got what's, uh, AEV products on it, like the front bumper, the rear bumper, um, bigger, better skid plates underneath. Um, you can get a snorkel, um, on the passenger side of that vehicle. So it's just a conversion package. Um, the bison is based off of AEV components and AEV is by far some of the best stuff, um, out there. Uh, AC is trying to get a little heads up already on yeah. the next walk around Wednesday. It's called wait and see. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, so it's an SUV. We'll say that and we'll leave it there. And it's white. It's a white SUV. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. I shot it today. I don't know. You keep changing everything on me. Yeah, I did. Yeah, no, because so. I had a different walk around Wednesday, and I decided to move that to Sunday, and I moved Sunday's video to sometime maybe next Sunday. I don't know. So, like, like I have, like. I mean, you dropped the ball this week. We were supposed to have a video go live Tuesday, and you got too busy. Yes, I got, I was, yeah, I didn't even, yeah, I didn't even, yeah. Didn't even get to do it. <laughs> so like, I'm, yeah, so, whatever. you know, to kind of give you a little bit of insight on YouTube. So it's best to let a video like marinate, right? To like, if I can upload a video and let it sit there for 48 hours, that really does good with the algorithm. And the, so the, the algorithm's funny. The algorithm, everybody thinks it's about likes and comments and stuff like that. The algorithm, it doesn't have nothing, that has nothing really to do with the algorithm. The algorithm has to do with, who watches your video? How long do they watch the video? And what do they do after they watch your video? Um, if you watch a video all the way through and you watch another video of that same creator, that's huge for the algorithm for that creator. So, so keep, keep watching my videos and then watch another one, watch another one. So to kind of give you an idea, there's this, there's this metric. I can talk about this stuff, right? I'm not going to get in trouble. Um, I'm not going to mention like names or anything like that. I don't know. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Mate. What's I, your, so I'm just going to talk about some of the analytics, but I don't think, I don't think, I don't, I don't think, I think we're cool on that. So, so inside, inside YouTube creator, there's analytics. And one of the biggest one is called views per viewer. And, and that's something that you really want to focus on to me as a focus on is how many, videos are you a viewer unique viewer watching and if my if my channel is only getting one person to view my videos then that's that's bad so, so that's something i've actually been working on over the last uh probably what since august right so so august april uh, august september time frame and just to kind of give you an idea my views per viewer was like 1.1 right so it's really low it's really bad i didn't understand that analytic um but now i understand it more and and now i'm up like 2.2 to 2.3 so the my goal and i got my goals right here uh, my goal is uh 3.0 plus uh for for to get it up there so um so that means i want you to watch three of my videos every single time I upload a video. So, um, someone like Mr. Beast, um, he is like nine, eight, something like that. And is it really like three every time you upload a video or just on in, average in that, that, in that time frame, in that month, in that 28 days? Okay. In, in a month, yeah. I want you to watch at least three. Yes, correct. So really we want you to watch a lot more than three. Yes, that's, that's, it's important for the algorithm, but that's what the algorithm is by like. So, you know, like if you hit thumbs up right now, right? So hit everyone hit thumbs up. 
this is not to do anything with the algorithm. It's really more psychological to, to that, that you as a viewer have enough thought process behind like, Hey, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I am going to like this video. I'm going to thumbs up this video and, and whatnot. And that's, that helps out, but it's not, it's not like huge, but like YouTube is such a science. It's, it's so mind boggling. So, so was, we're talking about, I'm ranting on this stuff, but, and it's cause I'm, I'm living in, I'm living this stuff 24 hours a day. I dream about YouTube now. So Wow. So instead of dreaming about me, well, you're kind of like you're dreaming about YouTube. Well, I mean, you're right here, you know, on my chest until you like roll over. No, and, that's until the dog gets in between. <laughs> so, but like, like the analytics on YouTube are like so absolutely crazy. And, and you just have to live and die by them and learn by them and all that, all that stuff. And it's just, it's just insane. So I, I upload videos based off of what I think is going to happen, how many views it's going to get and stuff like that. So I want to, I've always wanted to daily upload. Um, and I have enough content to daily upload, but how long can I keep up that? It's a lot of work to recreate all these content, all those videos. And now I'm like two to three hours just planning a video before I even pick up, before I pick up a camera. It's crazy. That's why we have a second channel. <laughs> yeah. You can daily vlog and put it on two different channels. Um, I like this question just because we did talk about the spring market update. It says, I see used cars are holding more value right now. Should I go used or new? I'm upside down, but I can put half the money I'm upside down on to help out. Say that, say that again. I didn't. So basically, they're upside down on their current vehicle. Mm-hmm. They want to get a new vehicle, new to them. Mm-hmm. Should they go used or new, and they can put half their negative equity down. So my so if you got half your negative equity, and and I would say if you got four thousand dollars negative equity, you got two grand down. If you got ten grand negative equity, you got five grand down. It's it's a different it's a different scenario, but. Um, in my opinion, I don't think you should roll over more than two thousand dollars negative equity, and you got to look at you got to look at true actual cash value versus what your payoff is. And dealers will dealers will play games, right? They'll be like, oh, "We'll give you ten thousand dollars for your car when it's really worth eight, and you have twelve thousand dollars payoff. You still have four grand negative equity, even though they told you that it's ten and and twelve, right? And the reason why that is is because they're making that money up somewhere else. They're charging you too much for the vehicle to the vehicle that you're buying." stuff like that. So that's why I like to work like real true actual numbers and why it's so important for you to ask the question, would you just write me a check for the vehicle? I'm not going to buy yours. And if they say yes, then perfect. You know, you have actual cash value or they're, or they're, or they're giving you way too low for it, but you know that up front. And then secondly, um, that, uh, um, you know, you're working with an honest dealer, but, um, I don't think you should go over, $2,000 $2,000 negative equity. And I just, I kind of mentioned that earlier. My daughter um, wanted to trade her car in and I'm like, nope, you can't do it. You got too much negative equity. And I'm like, you need, and I think I told her um, she needs five or $6,000 down, which was high for her, but I, I, I know how she is. So I tell her high and she says, well, I got four grand to put down. Then, then we would have a different discussion. Well, Penguin Knees says I'm upside down 10 K. I have 5 K to put down. But the other part of his question was, should he buy used or new? So new, it, it's it depends on the used car and it depends on it. But news, news going to carry more negative equity than used because used is going to do it on 5K. You probably can find the right vehicle. But in my opinion, and this is not a car salesman opinion, right? This is a financial opinion, which kind of sometimes gets me in trouble with people. Um, and and it, it just got me in trouble Uh on, on the at the end of December. So, um, you know, in my opinion, don't trade. If you got, if you got five grand down to pay, take the five grand, pay down the vehicle and just keep working and working and working to get in an equity position and then go in and, and buy the car you want. Used cars right now are so high that everything is high right now. Used cars, new cars, everything is so high. Um, and it's going to take probably all year and into next year before it comes down. If you've got a good, reliable, dependable transportation, then don't, don't change, just stick with it. But if you have some type of huge life change that you need a different vehicle, do it. But, um, Five grand's not bad, but I'm still I'm still stuck in my two thousand dollar negative equity. That's I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with that. Okay, let's go to Michael's super chat. Yes. What rate do you think I could get on an eighty four month seven year loan with eight hundred credit score? 
loan value of 55k on an 89k value. Okay. Yep, I got it. I understand. So, um, you probably can get something in the four percent range, like high fours, four nine, four five four, something like that. And I use four five four as a is that's kind of an odd number because I've seen that on eighty four months um, with this almost exact type of scenario. Um, but you want to look at you want to really want to look at okay, can I get in a three percent range on seventy two months compared to four five four or high fours on eighty four and see what your payment does right? So definitely shop that um, because it may not be much of a difference. So um, if you I'll get the payment calculator out here. So if you are financing fifty five thousand dollars and you're doing eighty four months at Five percent interest rate, which would be high five, high fours, right? Um, your seven seventy seven payment at a four point five percent, your seven sixty five. So there's only twelve dollars difference there, right? So let's just stick with five. Let's just stick with five percent on eighty four months. So if we go seventy two months and we can get we can get a three point five percent. That's eight forty eight. So you got to decide that is seven seventy seven. Um, is a seven 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 payment versus an eight forty eight payment um, worth going that? That's seventy dollars a month. Most people seventy dollars a month is a lot of money. So that's where you that's where you want to look at. But probably in the the high fours is what I would say um, on that. So not very many banks do eighty four months, and they feel that their risk is much higher. So they're going to have you a higher interest rate, even with an eight hundred credit score. But um, f- for Four five four and a half percent would probably be best. And and listen, I'm I'm always willing to be proved wrong. I, I can't make decisions for banks. Um, so if the if you know going in that hey I'm gonna be in the four percent range and the bank comes back at three nine nine, woo right? It's you're, you're, there's no reason to come to me and say I told you so. I did better, right? I'm gonna be excited for you. I'm gonna be ecstatic for you um, because the last thing I want to do is be on here and tell you, oh, you could get something in three percent range, and and then you're like, well, Mike, I got four five four uh, rate. You were way off. I would rather be way off uh, on being high than than being too low because I think my credibility is much better if I tell you high and kind of kind of put a caveat out there that hey, listen, it's 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 not science here. I, I can't get, or it is science here. I can't do what the bank determines, but, um, but yeah, so it's just kind of complicated, but it's, it's, it's easy at the same time, if that makes sense. Okay. Appreciate the super chat. Uh, let's go to this one. D town pyro. And I love the name. Um, wants to know basically how much his trade is worth. He has a 2017 cruise hatch RS premier. With 26,000 miles. Okay. I can answer this. Uh, I mean, there's, I don't know if you need to know about the sun and sound nope. packages or that stuff or the interior color. 2017. What year's onions? A 19. 19. We trade, we, her Tra- 17 we was traded, a lease. Yeah, we traded her 17. Um, I would say that that car is worth $11,000 trade in. Okay. Well, there's the answer. <laughs> it's a short answer. I know. You better go on the next one I mean, before I start going I haven't off. even looked for another question, <laughs> and you're already done. Um, okay. Somebody says- Oh, Michael said he's going 72 month then. So, yeah. I mean, it's 70 bucks, right? So, but at the same time, I'll say, I'll say this, that, hey, obligate yourself to the lower payment. I'm not a fan of 84 months. Obligate yourself to the lower payment and just pay it off just, you know, keep paying 800 or $900 a month and pay it off sooner. But I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of 84 months. I think there's too much, too much risk on 84 months. Uh, when you do that, 72 months is a little bit of risk. Oh, I got the camera on you a little bit of risk. Um, and 60 months is like perfect. So I know like all the gurus out there, right. They tell you 48 months is the best. That is the best, but, but you know, and we wouldn't be able to afford any cars at 48 months. Okay, our next super chat. Alan asked, "Are you done recording podcast?" That's a good question. What do you think? What do you think's the answer? I would say for right now. We're trying to go live again weekly, but doing more of the Q&A type uh, live stream and it just 
it got so mind boggling and so much work. And right now when you're, you know, he works a full time job and then YouTube's another full time job in between making video content and trying to do these live streams and everything. I think the podcast was just too much to take on. Yeah. I'm super glad that we built this because you know, this is, this is fine that we built this in our own house, the studio. Um, and I don't regret it one bit, but she hit the nail on the head and, and to come up with an hour's worth of content that I can spew to people, um, and then put it, you know, I'm recording the audio on this device right here that you can see, um, you know, and then putting it up on, on the podcast software and, and getting it distributed is a lot of work and it's just on one person. If I can, if I can start making it big, right. If I can start doing a lot more better stuff, which I'm working on, I'm trying to do that stuff and I can record podcast. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. I really enjoyed it. I, I just, just a few, we did it like a month and a half, right. It wasn't that long. Um, but the, the feedback that I got from the people that listened to the audio version of the podcast, I loved. And I'm like, yes. And it was getting me so excited. But the work overload was was just absolutely crazy. Just absolutely trying to plan that stuff. And you um, bit off more than you could chew. I am. And and I bite off more than I can chew all the time. But but I can handle I can handle ninety percent of it. In and problems happen and if you've You've, you've uh, recently got a text message or email from me today. Uh, you know, a problem that I'm having with, with a product that I'm just being forefront with. And, and I appreciate that nobody's being negative about it. Nobody's, nobody's said a word about it. Um, negative. I've gotten really good positive response for them, from those people. And, and that wasn't something that I bit off more than I can chew. Um, it was, it was just, it was just stuff that happens as a small business. I gotta, I gotta handle it. I'm not making any money on the product now. I'm losing money probably, but, um, but you know, it's, it's, it's a baby step for me to do bigger things. And once, once April comes along, um, I'm going to do something bigger and better and we're going to help out some amazing people. But, uh, you know, it's kind of a test to do that. And now I, now I kind of know where I stand and that's kind of what the podcast was, right? So we did the podcast. I didn't like, I didn't like the, I always kind of thought when we hung up the, the, the video that, we left things on the table. I think that I could have done better. And, and the reason I didn't do better is because I didn't plan enough or I didn't do enough research enough. And, and I just didn't have the format the way that I wanted the last couple of podcasts. Like, let me, let's just work on a half an hour's worth of stuff. Right. That's what we did. Right. Is that what it was? Uh, like, yeah. I think I said, let's just try 30 minutes instead of an hour. Let's just try 30 minutes. And then I didn't feel like that. I got enough information out there and Yes, I talk a lot. Yes, I go off. Yes, I go on tangents and I get that. But but there's nobody there's nobody out there anywhere in the world that is giving you the information that I give you. And this isn't a pat on the back. This isn't egotistical, narcissistic. This is simply that I love what I do and I love sharing what I do. That I want to help you have better car buying experiences and to give you the knowledge that I have. And Nobody out there can do a 10 minute video, including myself and give you all of the information. But the issue comes in line is our attention spans. Again, me included, we only have attention spans for about 10 minutes and or so. And ever since I changed up a lot of the way I do, um, my videos, I see the analytics just just sore. So, and that's where I'm getting people to come back to the videos because now I'm going to, now I'm going to stair step off of this video and come back and do another video and give more information where I would had a, a 15, 20 minute video. I have an eight to 10 minute video, but now I've got three of these videos and people are getting that information all in three videos, but they can watch these videos much easier at eight minutes than they can at 15 and 12 And the analytics. Don't lie. Right. I mean, you see those analytics. Oh no. I mean, yeah. People like the shorter videos, maybe because you just don't talk too much. And we appreciate every single person that has stayed on this live stream for <laughs> almost two hours yep. now. So please don't go away. Um, and I, of course, now you made me lose my train of thought on, you How, know. How's it my fault? It's always it's, your fault, uh, babe. Well, it's not my fault. It's your fault. You oh, here it is. Somebody asked, can I buy a car without a job? Oh, but I, I have saw money too. in the bank to prove. So 
I mean, I bought a car with no job one time, the Grand Prix. So back in 2006, I got fired from, from a job I shouldn't have been fired from, but I got fired. And uh, that's how I got down here to, to Kentucky. But, um, but um, I put unemployed <laughs> on my, on my credit app and they bought it. That's, that's 2006, right? Not 2021. But in a nutshell, no, um, I'm, I'm kind of being, I'm just kind of telling you my story, but the buyer, the buyer who, the buyer who approved, I should say this too, the buyer who approved my loan with GMAC personally knew me and knew that nothing was going to go screwy. So that's, that's, I forgot about that. Barb's, Barb's with GMAC, um, is an amazing lady. Um, and I haven't talked to her forever, but, um, so I had that personal relationship but and we had that car forever. Yep. So, but if you got a personal relationship with your bank that the money's in, now that is a different story. So you may be able to go into them and say, listen, um, I want to use my money in the bank as collateral or whatever the case may be. Um, you wouldn't say it that way. I'll take that back. Um, then I want to buy a car. Um, I'm going to pay for it with this money and blah, 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 and go on that way. So that bank may give you the thing, but if you go in and put unemployment down as a, as an income source or that you're unemployed, no bank is ever going to give you, um, give you the time of day. Now, if you put that you're retired and you have money coming in every month, two or $3,000 that you can sit there and say, Hey, listen, I've got this money invested and I'm making two or $3,000 a month. That's a different story. You can put retired. So I guess that's no job, right? So you could put retired and truthfully answer income that you're making on dividends or interest or whatever, but it's going to have to be, it's going to have to be $2,500, $3,000 a month minimum in order for that to work. So, um, so that's, I guess that's it. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's it. <laughs> um, AC is missing your Cubbies pick and the vet pick and stuff. I mean, I guess you can't, Yeah, when I know. You, when you go on screen, you can't see yeah, so here I'm gonna that I'm gonna one. I'm gonna push this over here. What are you doing? He just got up and left me. I mean, that is really mean. So I have I have this up here. I can see well. You're not even on the microphone. I know, Mister. So they can hear me. No, so they can't. There's the picture I have up now, and I love that picture because it's Ron Fellows. But uh, I want to have it up there, but we just gotta get another camera. Yeah. He really needs another camera that's more on the both of us. We even talked about possibly trying to put both of us on the same side. Um, I don't know what we're going to do. He he can't make up his mind ever. Like I said earlier about the... He likes to, I mean, you look at... He took his cubby's picture down and put up these uh, C8 coins. And, you know, he's always changing stuff up. Never, never fails. So the, uh, there's probably still holes back here. Did I fill those holes in? I don't think oh, no, you I did. No, I did. They're painted too. I did. Oh. I did fix them before. I had four big holes up there. Yeah. Cause the we had thing. that Steven, Louisville Chevy dude or. Yeah. Uh, Steven, Steven, uh, who's C8 customer gave it to me and it's, it's over here now. But, um, but yeah, so it's, uh, I'm always changing things up. I, I, I want to do better. I, you know, it's like there's this table takes up so much space and I probably could go smaller table, but over here off camera, I've got a bunch of stuff as well. I mean, um, this doubles as your like desk. That. Yeah, this is my desk and my. my we have to space. buy you a desk still yeah. to put in this room so that you can have a separate work area yep. and everything. But uh, ah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer this question before Michael's. So Jake says, "Is certified used worth the extra money?" <sighs> no. Certified use is a ripoff. I'm not a fan of certified use. And my dealership thinks the same thing, but but I've been like, I don't want to do a video on it because I don't want to piss GM off. Um, and the likelihood of them seeing this part of the video is low, but if they see it, oh well. Um, but certified use has gotten so out of control from the manufacturers. Um, and the reason one of, reason my dealership decided to stop doing it is because a 30,000 mile Chevy Traverse would come in and we would have to put $1,100 worth of tires on the car because it was this much under 
the manufacturer's minimum requirements for tires. And there's nobody in this world, zero people, and I don't ever say always, never, everyone, but there's nobody. There's nobody in this world at 30,000 miles on a Chevy Traverse that you go out and spend $1,100 on brand new tires because they were at 48% life. It just doesn't happen. So so every single Traverse came in, every single Traverse, and Traverse is a hot seller for used car market. It's a hot seller for new car market too, but it's a, it's a hot used car uh, vehicle. And, um, and so we buy them a lot once they come off a lease, and they lease really well up in, in Michigan around the plants and the factories. So we would buy these, and we would have to spend so much money to do it, and we had to spend $250 in service. We had to spend to do the inspection process for the GM certified. We had to spend $500 on the warranty part from GM. And, and next thing you know, we're $3,000 into this vehicle, and we haven't even tried to offer it for sale yet just to, just to recondition it. So... In my opinion, no, it's not worth it, and the warranties that you get um, doesn't doesn't do the cost. And you're like, and manufacturer dealerships will be like, well, if you buy an extended warranty, it's cheaper with a certified use. But no, it's not because you're spending that extra money on the purchase price of the car. So we stopped certifying cars about four years ago, five years ago now. And we were like number three in the region. We were, we were a huge certified used dealer and we stopped doing it and nothing but good things has happened. We, our profits have went up. Uh, our, we didn't miss a sale. We've never had anybody come in and, and say, Oh, if it was certified used, I'd buy it. It's never happened. And that was a concern when we do it. So Michael says, um, my credit union is offering 3% for 72 months thoughts. Um, if it's, yeah, if it's 3% flat, you're good. So there's not much, there's not much out better than that. You might get something like 229 from Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is offering low twos. But when you start looking at the difference between Wells Fargo 229 and 3%, um, it's it's very minimal money. And and to kind of give you an idea, um, on $55,000 on 60 months at, oops, I put 69 months. That's what she said. <laughs> um, at a 3% rate. On fifty-five thousand dollars is nine hundred and eighty-eight dollars. At two point three percent, it's nine hundred and seventy-one dollars. That's it on fifty-five thousand dollars. So it's not much money on sixty months. So, so three. What was that math again? But nine, he's doing seventy-two. Oh, I did. Uh, yeah, sorry. I don't, where where are you getting so, sixty months from? Yeah. So, uh, three percent, eight thirty-six, two point three, eight nineteen, eight nineteen. So eight nineteen. And 836. 819 minus 836. 17. $17. That's it. I did that in my brain. Yeah, I know. I'm, I, <laughs> okay. I rely on calculators for everything. So now, I I mean, unless you want to go that extra effort, I w- I'd stick with 3%. Because um, one extra payment per year is going to save you that difference between 3 and 2.3. Back to our discussion of the no job retired. Oh, I thought you were going to say you're right versus I'm wrong. And you were going to tell me that I'm always right. I've never been wrong. We know that I'm always right. (laughs) No, no, I'm always right. And there's no argument there. (laughs) So somebody asks, what about disability? So how does disability play into? Disability is a source of income. So the only things that don't work for income is unemployment. Well, I take that back. Disability as far as SSI or some type of insurance policy. Yes. So if you're on workers comp disability, that's not going to work. Um, but if you, um, if you have SSI and all that stuff, do that all the time. So the, the, the the income resources that don't work is, um, unemployment. Um, uh, like, like these, uh, labor companies, like, um, I don't know the labor company's name, but, uh, temporary work, right? So if you work for a temporary company and you got bad credit, they ain't going to approve you. Um, but if you got an 800 score and you work for that temporary company, they'll approve you in a heartbeat. Okay. So, so Tiffany, who asked about the disability said, if you have bad credit are on disability and no good trade in, what's your chances of getting a used car? It depends on the car. So there's, there's nothing ever Ever, ever, ever. There's nothing set in stone on the, on buying a car. Um, I've gotten a four. I've gotten a 499 credit score bought, and I couldn't get a 580 credit score bought. So everything is everything is separate. Everything is different, and for every single bank of their lending practices. So, um, but 
you, you got to be making 2,500, three grand a month in order for that disability to work. Um, big down payment, good co-signer and, and you'll, you'll be good, but it's, it's difficult. It's, it really is difficult. So, and so, and the biggest thing is make sure you have your award letters, uh, available to you. You have proof that it's being deposited into your checking account, know how to log into your checking account, make sure your driver's license match, make sure your hey, address. Guess what? Huh? You can't have a video. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, if you just go on YouTube and, and how to buy a car with bad credit and, and put Chevy dude behind it, it'll pop mine up first. But the, but that's like the biggest thing that causes the issues at the dealerships is you can't log in your, your banking account. Um, and then when you do log into your bank account, it's got an address from two addresses ago. And then your, your driver's license, um, doesn't match and all that stuff. And it's just brutal. So make sure everything is accurate on all your paperwork and make sure you have those award letters and make sure that you got proof of everything, um, uh, goes in. Okay. We're getting down to our last few minutes. So we're going to try to hit these a little faster, Mike. All right. Don't be so long winded, especially when you have a video. Yes. Um, Paul wants to know when's the best time to buy a 21 Suburban? Uh, right now. As soon as you can find yeah, one. Yeah, if you can find <laughs> one, do it. So, like, we've got a bunch of them coming in, and they're all being sold before they hit the ground. So, if you go to a dealership and, and they don't have any, go in, talk to a salesperson, and what do you have coming in available, and buy what they've got coming in available because you're not going to find one. And I talked about that at the beginning of the broadcast, that that it's frustrating to consumers because they don't know this stuff, and and uh, um, they go in and they get someone like me and I'm telling them the facts and the truth. And they're like, screw you. You're just a car salesman because they don't know. And it takes them going to three or four or five dealerships. The frustration level goes to an end to, to all high end. And it just, it just goes, it just goes nuts. Okay. Uh, Jake Moore had obviously been on a previous live stream, even maybe last week, because I think we talked about this. But he said, last time you said you never sell a 2014 Silverado. He wants to know why. Okay. So they, they've had nothing but problems with those, with those, those, are the, that was the first year. And this is where the first year bugs work. The first year bugs out is really true with this particular vehicle. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's just all sorts of little itty bitty bugs and vehicles shutting off. I did more buybacks on 2014 Silverados than I'd have ever in my entire career. Um, vibrations, just everything was goofy for those years. So, um, if, if, uh, I'll save my piece to someone because it goes back to what I learned in December. Once again, it got reminded about in December. I didn't learn it. I got reminded, um, that if I don't take your money, somebody else will. So I will save my piece and this is my opinion. And if you go against my opinion, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna do it. So, and, and if you go look at my Yelp, right? I, I, I created a Yelp for some reason. I don't even know why I created Yelp. I created a Yelp and then I got a bad review and that's the only review on my Yelp showing up is the bad review of how horrible of a person I am. So um, 2015, I believe it was, the Yelp review will tell you what year it was. Um, 2015, I traded a vehicle in from someone, from a really good customer who just recently also bought a car for me in the last year. They uh, had a 14 Silverado that had nothing but problems, and um, we allegedly fixed it. The customer who bought it signed a form saying that there was there was goodwill money given on this vehicle, and for whatever reason, that was oblivious to him, and he had the same problems. And I told him this stuff, but um, he wrote a negative re Yelp review on the situation. And so, at, so once I got that negative Yelp review, and um, I never, never, never sell one of those trucks again unless like someone's like begs me to buy it. So just because I'm scared of it, I don't want I don't want the reputation of selling bad cars. That's you know I'm not a perfect human being, but at least I try. And th that being said, th that the person who wrote that Yelp review wasn't very honest with my dealership either because he worked right with the owner of the company, and and I found out that he had actually traded that vehicle um, about a week before. Um, and he was still trying to get cash out of the owner because he was saying that he, he was suffering losses and he made up a story about the vehicle being on the side of the road. That might've been a, a, a true story, but it didn't happen that week to make that it, he made it sound like so. So yeah, so there's just, there's so many negatives in my head about that year. So that's why I was like, I'm done. Not doing it again. Okay. We have a super chat from James, Wright. I have supplier discount. 
When should I bring this up? Uh, bring it up right away. So supplier discount, um, first responder discount through the end of this month, you have, um, um, how they call it? I don't know. Um, I don't. Yeah, see it's, these it's 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 incentives. it's like doctors, nurses, um, first. If maybe they don't call it. For, maybe they call it first responders. I don't remember what they call it. But um, to the end of this month, if you're a doctor, nurse, working at you know working at several things, even a veterinarian gets this. this is crazy. I was looking at the rules yesterday, helping a fellow salesperson out. Um, they get supplier discounts, so it's best to tell them you have supplier up front because it's the second best way to buy a car outside of being an actual employee of the factory. So bring it up right away. It'll save you a lot of, a lot of hassle because they can only sell um, the vehicle at one price. They can't negotiate. Uh, the only thing that you can negotiate is your trade. Okay. And we're going to end on this last one. Oh, Jake said frontline. That's probably what you're thinking. Front, yeah. Frontline or yes. essential yes. workers. Something like that. But we're going to end on this last one. And, guys, if we did not get a chance to answer your question, we apologize. If you want a guaranteed answer, Super Chat is always the way to go. But we're going to end on this last note. It's almost been two hours. And Mike will talk a little while on this one, too. So what's I think I think we should do a 12-hour live stream. You said this last week. I don't think you can handle – it would have to be a Sunday. Yes. Because that's the only time we have 12 hours 12, available. 12, yeah, just bank out 12 hours. Otherwise, you're just going to watch me sleep And just on. do it. And it actually be 11 hours and 59 minutes because uh, something happens goofy. Daryl taught me this. Something goofy happens at 12 hours, so it has to be 11 hours and 59 minutes. But we'll still title it 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if I could handle 12 hours of talking to about you? this stuff. Oh, okay. I thought you were like... You're well, not. I was going to be mean and say... You know, talking to you, but then I remembered people don't, be don't mean like me. us being ourselves sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, Dennis asks, how do I get in touch with the Chevy dude to buy my new C8? Uh, own a C8.com. Really simple. I don't have to talk. You thought I was going to talk about this a long time? It's well, really simple. but also going I've, into I've got- the fact that it is an 18 month to two year lead time just talk about it go ahead oh i get to talk about it and you put me on screen which makes me even more self-conscious thanks but okay i'll just mute I you figured- and now you're muted you're gonna screw all this up and i don't want i don't want my business screwed up okay you're unmuted well then you better fire me <laughs> from everything your youtube get producer, out of my house, get out of your, my house. <laughs> your uh uh what else do i do for you oh if I get two thumbs up, I'll Taking fire her test. right now. <laughs> oh, wait, never mind. You're not fired. I need my GM test taken. I mean, GM, no, she does not log in and take my test. Nope, nope. Uh, yeah, I have the product knowledge down more than you do. <laughs> you wait till the car comes and sits there. AC and says, don't it. forget about those tomahawk steaks. Yes, so. that's getting cooked up on Sunday. Maybe he'll be nice and put a picture up on the community page. All or right. Yeah, on I'll, I'll do a community Instagram or people something. who people who aren't here. They're like, what a jerk. He's, he's, he's flaunting his tomahawk steak or something. I don't know. I was like, it's, it's funny reading. The, it's funny reading comments that, that people just watch my videos once or whatever, and they don't watch them and whatnot. But anyways, uh, how to buy a, how do I see eight for me is, uh, it's really simple. Just go to own C8.com O W N the letter C the numeral com, and, and just put down a thousand dollar deposit and then just sit back and wait. And one day I'll text you and say, hey, great news. It's time to order your C8. Here's a private link to my calendar that that schedules 30 minutes with me. And this is the link to tell me what you want on your car. And it's and it's that simple. And it literally is that simple. Like there's so many, there's so many things out there that oh, maybe I'm gonna rant. Damn you. <laughs> Um, See, I told you so it wasn't many, going to be there's quick. So, there's so many things it's out there. It's already 930. I know. There's so many things out there that people are just making things difficult. And I don't want to be, if I if I have to make it difficult for you, that means it's difficult for me. And I'm not making things difficult for myself. I promise you that. That's why I developed the website. That's you make why make things difficult for me all the time. That's intentional and a lot of fun for me. And uh, um, I have a secret book that I like, oh yeah, I just did that. This is six points. So I have a point system when I make things difficult for you. So, uh, and, and I'm winning. So 
but yeah, so I, I, I really try to make it simple. And then what I do and anybody who's, who's got my, um, who's on the C8 list now, or has, has bought one in the past. Um, oh, Dave Beast here, um, healthcare professionals. That's the tech, that's the technical name. Um, so the shit, I forgot what I was talking about. The, <laughs> See, so I just don't want to make it difficult. Oh, any, anybody who was forgetting. anybody who's on my C8 list know that I try to update once a month. And and even if it's not much, it's just like, hey, listen, I'm here for you. I haven't forgotten about you and whatnot. And I and I and at the end of the videos, I'm like, please don't respond to me. I send these videos out to 700 people and 700 people text me back. Oh, my God. And I and I and then and then people get pissed off because I miss their texts. Um, and they're like, I text you two weeks ago and I didn't hear anything back from you. Oh, sorry. That's, that was the day. Oh, I see what day you sent that out. I see what day time you sent that. Yeah. I sent, I sent a text message to everybody and everybody was saying thanks or whatever. So I've gotten to the point at the end of the video is like, please don't text me back. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I know you're thankful, but please don't do it because it ruins my text message threads. So, but, um, uh, you know, it's like, I'm just, I'm really laid back and really simple and, and people who hate me because they see me on the internet. Um, they just, they just don't know me. And, and that's why, that's why haters never affect me. Um, because it's like, you, you don't know me. And, and there's a car group here in Louisville. Um, and they absolutely hate me and it's hilarious. And anybody, anytime that I talk to somebody who I think is anywhere remotely in that group, like I talked to somebody today, um, uh, cause I'm, I'm getting pictures of a vehicle. Uh, professional pictures of the vehicle. And I would assume that he's in that group. So I said, um, um, I told him to like, listen, like unbeknownst to what you think, you know, about me, unbeknownst to what you read about me, here's what you need to know about me from me, not from someone else. And I said, I'm really laid back. I'm really easy going. And, and like, I don't like, I'm not a micromanager. Like all this is what I want. Boom, 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 boom. If you do that, we're good to go. You guys see how easy it is to get him to rant oh, because I said I wasn't going to rant. He, uh, who knows how he got on that, but there was a quick question and a and it another was. comment that I wanted to make before we get off. So, dude in sky wanted to know, and it wanted to know if he's an EMT in Alaska if the uh first responder discount works for him. Yes. So, um, it actually even works for volunteer firefighters. So, so as long as you're a first responder, you gotta have proof, um, which would be, I, I'd have to read the instructions just one more or the proof of, uh, what it is, but usually like a badge or paycheck stub is usually the thing, an ID, something to that effect. So, um, California grown. Thanks for the super chat. Derek, Derek thanks, thanks for the super chat. And then, we California have, says, hey, bud, I'm in the market for a TRX. Can you help me with a purchase, and will it be a markup? Um, I really can't. So um, God, I don't want to talk about this, but I will. So, like, I had all these people after Street Speed, even before Street Speed, um, people are asking me TRX, 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 and I was being told no. And then I I, I got, like, 50 people that has contacted me, at least 50 people, and I call, I go over the to the new car manager at our our, our Ram store. I'm like, listen, so there's no way that I can get more allocations for a Ram TRX is that I can sell 50 of them right now. Oh yeah. We got four ordered right now and they're, they're being built. What? You told me that there was none. So, so I just kind of like just washed my hands of our, our Ram store. I'm just like, I'm tired of dealing with them. They're, they're morons. I said it earlier. I don't care if Mr. Bachman's watching this. It, it, I do care about Mr. Bachman, but, but, uh, I'm just, I'm just tired of, I'm just, I can't handle mediocrity, mediocrity and, and people who just don't do anything. And it's like, not that, not that I'm anyone special or not that I'm need to be on a Are plateau. Sure? I'm oh, I'm special, but not like anything special good, special. Ed. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, but to communicate with me would be a great business strategy because I have, I have this following, right? I, I, I love what I do. I, I have passion for what I do. And I, I want to, I want to share with what I know to people, especially in the car business, because nobody looks, nobody looks at me and says, I like that guy. If they don't know me from YouTube or social media. Right. Um, but, but, uh, if you know, I, I go on the, I go on an airplane and I don't tell people I'm a car salesman and I don't tell people I'm a YouTuber cause they just talk my ear off. I tell them I'm an insurance salesman and 
Um, and then I say, how's your insurance? Do you need insurance? And the next thing I know, they never say another word for me. And because you realize you got into another, yeah, I know. Rant. so, but so, so <laughs> I wish I could help you. I've got, I've, I've, I've had like 50, 60 names wrote down and just, it's too much of a hassle over at our Ram store. So I, I can't, it's, it sucks. I wish I could. And Ram, Ram did a really good job. I love, I love working with the people with Ram. Um, they did so good for me in street speed and I got such good communication from them, which I was really shocked that I got great communication from them since I'm the Chevy dude and I don't get this communication from Chevy, but, but, uh, they, they helped out so much and I, and I feel bad that, you know, I didn't make, I didn't over promise anything, but I told them that I would do more videos for them and I would do things for them and stuff like that. I'm not fulfilling that promise. I will, I'm not going to let them down, but it's just like, you know, it is what it is. Um, oh. uh, email address info at burnt rubber Uh, that's the email address that'll get to me. I don't look at that much, but, uh, uh, I have other people who do and they'll get, they'll get the information to me, but info at burnt rubber media.com. Stephen Rapp, do the 12 We're not hour. making this a 12 hour <laughs> live stream tonight. <laughs> he says, do the, your son is actually still waiting. Oh, is I he? Think. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. I mean, last do the 12 hour would be awesome. Like people in glass cages winning a prize. Hey, good business folks. Oh, he's out there. He just said yeah, something. He's I'm out old. there waiting on us to wrap this okay. up because I told him we'd be done at 930. Oh, okay. And I didn't know you that. are now almost past. Well, you, didn't, you didn't tell me that he was coming. You didn't tell me we were in no, at 930 I because of you. him. I appreciate that surprise. So uh, we'll think about the 12 hour. I want to do it. Live stream. Be fun. I think it'll be fun. We'll see about that. But. Guess what, guys? We will be back next weekend. Um, Friday or Saturday? Friday or Saturday. Yep. I, we don't know. Saturday did really well last week. We had a lot of people on. We got about the same amount of people on now. It's a little bit lower. So we're, we're going to probably test out next Saturday and see what it's like. And uh, we'll go from there. So thank you. Appreciate you. We'll see you next week. What is that?